Shirt Show. All right, let's go. Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Shirt Show! All right, episode 48 of Shirt Show. We're talking with John from Logo Daddy Graphics in Missouri. Let's go! So, hey, should we do some sponsors? Yeah, let's talk about them. Easy way. It's the easiest way. It is. And you know what? I was reclaiming screens as I do every day, all day, all night, all day, all night. All day, er day. Yep, exactly. Okay. And Easy Way's line of eco friendly chemicals will get the job done <laughs> faster, more efficiently, and will cost you a fraction of the cost per screen. Easy Way is the easiest way. The easiest way. Yeah. Our next sponsor is Monarch. Uh, Monarch Color manufactures the newest, most innovative plastisol screen printing inks on the market today. I came, I came, I came, I came out swinging. You notice yeah, this? I see that. Yeah. The funny thing is, is when you start reading, you get so much closer to the microphone <laughs> and it just gets so much more intense. It's like Monarch Ink. Like <laughs> right well, into the microphone. <laughs> I just want everybody to know, you know, like oh, the real like the details. Yeah. These are the mm -hmm. details. Like when we come in with, you know, our sponsors. The facts. We come in hot. Yeah. So that's why I want it to be crystal clear. Mm -hmm. So Monarch, ink better, print better, be better. Live Moss. You like Monarch. how I snuck that in there? Yeah. I snuck that last one in there. What do you think? <laughs> you, <laughs> you got me. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Hold on. You... Oh, my God. Wait a minute. Where'd it go? Dylan, where, somebody's, somebody broke in and stole my, my famous button. Seriously, it's not here. <laughs> Seriously, dude, it's not here. I'm super pissed. <laughs> it would it would be impossible to draw another one. Don't make fun of it. In fact, it's one of my favorite things that I have. It's one of my favorite things I've ever made. Say that to your son. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, dude. This isn't cool. Do you have 900 drawers there or what? Who are you calling? Joanne. Like she straightened up my desk the other day. She was She's like, like hey. yeah, I threw that away. Oh my God, seriously. <laughs> I'm stressing out. Because that I is. Hope, I hope she answers with something You're horrific. Uh, voice message system. Three, one, four, six. She doesn't even have a voicemail. Oh, I found it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> dude i'm seriously i broke into a sweat hold on mm. all right you ready oh my god right. seriously like how did we like this is the mo one of the most important things of the show the if not the most important part of the oh show. god do you know that um i've got to read you this hold on before we do it or do you want to do it first it's up to no you go, ahead, go ahead go ahead go ahead okay. story. this comes from kyle ostrander We'll just call him Kyle. I probably got there. I botched the last name. Great show, gents. I'm not a screen printer yet, but learning as much as I can. Your show is great and interviews are informative. I do have one complaint. Are you ready for what it is? I can't wait. <laughs> I have a basset hound that was named Frank. He is now f -f 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 Frank. I don't mind, but my wife gets annoyed from the 20 to 30 times I call him during the day. <laughs> <laughs> Keep up the great work. I love that <laughs> so much. That's awesome. Um, Imagine just call, calling your dog from across the yard. And you're like, <laughs> bah, 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 Frank. <laughs> and your wife is like, you're just like, I can't do this. I just can't do this. <laughs> Leaves anymore. him. That's right. Okay. Oh, ready? Bah, 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 Frank. That was pretty good. That was pretty good timing. <laughs> Every screen in my shop is a Frank. Yep. I actually, 
because I've been in the reclaim area and in the dark room, I went through and got rid of all those bullshit screens that I had in there and I made a huge pile of them. And I told a local shop, I know, Hey man, these are yours for free. If you want them, get them out of here. <laughs> um, nice so man. yeah, Frank all the way, man. Graphic screen fashion. Fashion. Let's thank the listeners again. Cause we got a ton of people. Yeah. Talking about us and sharing things. So keep doing that, please. Um, Good idea. Yeah, we love you guys. Thanks. And action. What's up? Hey. Hey, you got me? Gotcha. (laughs) He's not in front of a press. He is not not in front front of a press. press. No. My presses aren't as impressive as everyone else's. So, (laughs) you know. (laughs) You're in front of a good saying, it looks like, though. Build a team so strong. You don't know who the boss is. Yeah. And then there's an arrow oh. that points to him. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> It'd be cooler if there were. <laughs> you know, today's guest is John Gibbs from Logo Daddy Graphics. And I met you, John, when you came to my shop. You had bought a piece of equipment and you came yeah. to pick it up. It was a heat wave dryer. Yeah. And oh, he bought it from you? He did, yeah. yeah. Um, I had two heat waves and I consolidated into one sprint. We finally were able to push our, the presses close together and, and mm-hmm. fit a dryer in here. And so, uh, but the heat wave was perfect for your shop. Um, when you yeah, came still here, is. Kind still of. is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're still using it. <laughs> when you came here, like we started chatting, I don't know, it seems like we talked for a couple hours and I knew right away we were going to be BFFs and... <laughs> Um, but that story about that heat wave and how you got it into your shop, I think is a good one. Is, um, is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So well, thank, thank goodness we don't have that shop anymore. Um, cause we, out, we were there for like seven or eight years and we outgrew it in year one. So <laughs> we just kept making it work. But, um, yeah, that heat wave dryer, we pretty much had to stand it on. It's basically stand it up straight and drop it through a concrete floor to a basement. And it was tight Wait, What in the basement. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So right? we right. did. So here's what we did. Bill. <laughs> we had a shop. It was a, it was an old, it was like an oil change place, like a Jiffy loop. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> we, we got a good buy on it and it was like in the area that we wanted to be, it was right across from our like local high school at the time. And we were like, man, we can buy this thing cheap. Cause who the, who the hell can use a Jiffy lube, you know, an old Jiffy lube. So we bought this building, half of it was like office space, which was pretty good. And then the other half, the actual oil change where, where the guys would go down in what they call the pit, which was really yeah. just a full basement, but it was nice because the basement didn't have like columns in it. It was just a flat basement. Um, that was our whole print shop down there. And so the biggest challenge was how do we get, how do we get the stuff down there? So we, uh, so you had to feed the dryer through the pit hole. And, yeah. Well, no, um, we got one dryer through there, but this one wasn't going to fit like that. What we ended up doing was so, cause we took several autos down this thing and like all kinds of equipment. So what we had to do was we cut like a, it was about an eight foot by eight foot hole in the floor. And we, we built like a, I guess like a plug, like a deck that would just drop into that area. So like you could still walk over it and everything. Cause we had stuff above that area too. But then above that we built, first of all, I build a lot of stuff. So we built a, <laughs> we built a gantry crane, like a, an I-beam crane, right? Like right. with a little crane dolly that comes over and we'd put like a 5,000 pound chain hoist on it. And then we'd bring the equipment in, we'd reach over, chain hoist it, lift it up, swing it out over the hole, and then drop it down through the hole into the basement. And then we did like a, that was actually went down into our dark room, but the dark room had a wall that we could remove. And then it would just, then we would bring the equipment out onto the floor that way. It was a little tricky. It sounds just a lot of work. Super fun. It was really dumb when people, when people saw it, when we would post pictures, people were like, what the fuck? Cause it's, <laughs> it was pretty crazy. And, and it was scary at times. Cause like, like the dryer, I mean, that thing, I mean, you have it rigged with so many different cables and straps and things. And then like, it's about to fall on. I couldn't even think of like crazy with a dryer thing. where I, mm-hmm. where I would like 
wrap anything around it without it like snapping or breaking. So on that heat wave dryer and, um, you'll just have to take my word for it, but we put a rope that was basically like, that would tighten as you know, if it slid, it would tighten. And we had so much pressure on this, these straps, you know, like, uh, they're like 5,000 pound, like cargo straps. We had right, so right. much pressure around the dryer that it actually at the top and, and you know, it's an M and R dryer. I mean, they're pretty stout, but at the top it squeezed it. And it, you can see the, the metals pinched at the top. It was crazy. <laughs> That's when we weren't sure if we were going to lose it or not. So <laughs> how the hell did you get everything out of there? Same way. Okay. So same way. But when I put that dryer in there, the joke was, if this thing ever comes out, we're just going to cut it up with a sawzall and take it up the stairs in pieces, you know? <laughs> and, um, and then we actually sold the building and bought a big building. And I'm like, uh, well, that's the dryer. So right. you do have to figure out how to get it the hell back out of here. Like it was crazy. We had a guy, um, we had this guy who had a crane truck. Like he was this old guy who just like welded and did all kinds of things. And he had this crazy truck with a crane on it and he would back in and he could reach over with the crane and help us lift stuff up. And I, I was and, talking about that. I think last week episode yeah. where I was talking about, I, I got an old oval dryer in our shop that way. Someone had a crane truck Yeah, and they picked yeah. it up and brought it in. I'll say that's almost like as crazy of a story as our friends in, uh, in, in in Holland. Yeah. Because they had nothing. I, I don't they, think anything beats that. I mean, yours sucked. Like that sounds horrible. Yeah. Oh yeah. They, they had a boat, they, right. They had to fucking take it down like a canal and then like take it through the wall, of the building and everything. That's insane. Yeah. People, we do crazy shit. Don't we? When we need to make money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's awesome though. I mean, it's worth a story. Like yeah, we, do it, ton, we do a ton of fun shit here as like friends and everything. And like, I always end up yeah. getting them into like horrible situations. I feel like, or like <laughs> right. when we were in the band, there would be shows we would play that it was like, why the fuck are we here? Yeah. <laughs> but I, six my flights response, of stairs. My response is always, but think of all the stories we'll have. Mm -hmm. And we always yeah. have good stories from those shitty events. So. Yeah. We, I've, I've been there. I have a lot of those. <laughs> most of them weren't from work, but we were, but yeah, some of them, that first shop was kind of crazy. I mean, there was days where like, uh, we would just walk through with a video camera and like record like what was happening at the time. And I mean, we do so many things at our business that it was just like, we'd have, we'd have 13 or 14 people in this little building working. And it was like 2,400 square feet with the basement included. And it was just insane. So yeah. So I how, mean, how far are you guys from each other? What's it? 45 minutes, maybe? I'd say 50. something like that. Yeah, with not a lot of yeah. traffic, we could probably... With traffic, it's probably about an hour, I'd say. Yeah, but yeah, probably so. John, our, you know, you do more than just screen printing. And so it's kind of those... It's both vinyl and vinyl wraps, I guess, and yeah. screen printing. And so that's what it was when I first visited your shop. It was screen printing was down there and the, everything else was upstairs. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. I guess, did, didn't you pull cars in or you have the ability to pull... Yeah. Yeah, we did. We would, we had like one bay wasn't real big, but it was big enough. We could get in most like work trucks and things like that so that we could wrap those and do like a lot of, a lot of trailers, smaller trailers, things like that we could get in. But, and then we have another, we had another shop at that time that we would take things to, we would, um, we would do, we do a lot of race work, uh, like race cars, like dirt track racing and stuff. And, um, Kenny Trader was a former, uh, NASCAR guy. I don't know if you've heard of him, but his shop, he happens to live about maybe 10 minutes from us. So we would bring everything big to his shop and then we'd put everything small in our shop that we could fit. And, uh, it worked out pretty good for a while, but we're glad to have our new building. Yeah. The We've new already building. outgrown it. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I saw, I saw pictures on Instagram of the new building. It looks super nice, super clean. Now you guys bought that building. Yeah. So this building, it was crazy. Um, we were just, I was sitting in the old building one night and we had talked a lot about, you know, we knew we needed a bigger building, but we really didn't think that anybody um, would be that interested in our building. Cause again, it sat for a long time before we bought it. We we're thinking like, who's going to buy this, this old Jiffy Lube that's now a print shop and so on and so forth. So I kind of was just, I just like went on, Zillow or something. and was just looking at commercial property around our area and 
the building I'm sitting in jumped out and it was like, I knew the guy that was selling it. He was selling a lot of stuff and kind of, uh, he owned a lot of properties. He was selling a lot of stuff. So I, um, called the realtor, which I hate doing. I always like calling the guy, right? Like I never want to, I hate going to a realtor cause now I can't, man, yeah. yeah, I can't wheel and deal. And he doesn't get a good feeling for what I'm willing to do and him. And so I called the realtor. I got, basically just was getting some basic information, went and checked out the building that night. It was like a Friday night. And by like Saturday at noon, I was meeting the actual owner over there. And, um, we were talking and I was explaining what I was, what I was thinking. And he was trying to sell it. Um, it, we, you know, again, we bought this building pretty cheap, but it needed a lot of work. And, um, so we did kind of a, we do what nobody does anymore. Um, most people are, <laughs> I, I, we did like a kind of a handshake deal of like, Hey, you give me six months free rent and, um, I'm going to stick a bunch of money into your building. And then at six months, I'm going to buy it from you. Cause it's going to take that long to get all the stuff figured out. And I can sell my building in that time. And, um, and it was a good enough price that we just went ahead and did it. So we, we kind of shook hands, trusted each other and, I put a whole lot of money into his building and a lot of work, not even really, you know, most people are like, you're crazy. Why would you do that? But I don't know. It all worked out. Everybody did what they said they were going to do. And, you know, we have a really nice building now that we got for about half price. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I love that so much because that's pretty close to what happened here. Like me and the guy yeah. had a handshake deal. Um, I mean, you can't do that everywhere for sure. Like, it's no. Not, yeah area base and if the, like you said you kind of knew that guy mm -hmm. um that's kind of what worked out here like he knew i was a hometown kid yeah um, same thing and, and so on and it was just kind of like works out that way but i i i feel like i had this conversation the other day too with somebody who was talking about oh it was uh alexa and tyler and we were talking about how um just buy some shit building that has a roof over it has water has mm -hmm. electric and as long as it's like more than enough space that you need, get a great deal on it. Just fix it up as you go. Start fixing it. Yeah. Like don't, yeah. don't go to a building that's like fully done. That costs you like crazy amount of money. Like just buy some cheap piece of shit, make mm -hmm. it your own and then yeah. fix it over time. This guy actually told me it was kind of cool. Um, my, uh, my grandparents raised me and my grandfather was an entrepreneur. Well, he owned a radiator shop. So he was just a small business guy, right? I don't know if he was an entrepreneur, but <laughs> I guess so. But, um, he was just a good guy in the town and did a lot of stuff to help people out. And this guy, we went to lunch when we were actually kind of ironing out the price and said, Hey, I came in at about maybe almost a hundred thousand dollars below where he was wanting to be. And, um, and I said, look, this is where I need to be. And this is how much I'm going to put into the building and so on and so forth. And the guy literally said to me, he goes, you know what? He goes, I'm going to do it because it was about 30 years ago, my truck broke down and it was in front of your grandpa's shop. And I stopped there and he like fixed my radiator and did a bunch of stuff and didn't charge me hardly anything and like really helped me out. And I had a date that night or something, I don't know, you know, hold the store. And I and met my and wife goes, and my kids. <laughs> yeah. Right. So he goes, so he goes, because he helped me out, I'm going to help you out. And I'm like going, you know, Hey, thanks grandpa. You just saved me a hundred K. Dude. Hell yeah. That, that's awesome. See, that's, that's the benefits of being in a small town, dude. And like, it just is doing it is that kind of good, stuff good small town stuff yeah for sure agree the rules yeah i, wish I like it, it i wish that would work even in even in big towns you know what i mean yeah like it's, it's just, just too harder. bad that it is a little harder i think you could probably make it work i mean sure that that path though isn't for everyone i mean some like when we when i started this um i had owned buildings before i had owned two of them you know mm -hmm. my shop was in a building that i owned twice this time around though it was a Lee C's market, you know, like it was in 2009 mm -hmm. and we're coming off that crash and it was like buildings were cheap. I mean, you yeah. know, Lee was cheap. And so I did it because I, I wanted to, I didn't want to spend or invest any money in real estate. You know, I just wanted, I was buying equipment. I was paying cash for it. Yeah. I didn't want to have to also um, put, you know, throw money down on a building. And so, yep. Yep. Um, I think though that at a certain point, like, especially now at, at our square footage, this isn't the best deal We're we're just sure. so rooted in, you know, like this, we've been here for so long and this is where, yeah, where do you move? Be. Oh man, that would be, it would be mm -hmm. weird at first. And so it'd because be a nightmare we do, to get all that shit out of there. Too. Yeah. 
For sure. It would, it would take a little bit of work to move at this point, but sure. at the same time, if financially, you know, it made sense and especially with like you had, it, you know, you had it made both of you, I guess, when COVID happened, because, you know, it was your building, you owned it. And so, you know, with, with in our, in my situation or our situation, it's, it's tough. You guys were in um, that new building pre COVID, right? Yeah, we were. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. We invested a bunch and moved here and thinking like, yeah, we were going to be able to like double our production and then COVID happens and you go, Whoa, 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 what just happened? But uh, yeah. you know, the truth is what's because we got such a good buy on the building and um, we were in a position that we could put some money into it. And I did a lot of the work. I was also in a good position where I was able to, I mean, I took like six months. I was over here working all the time. So I was able to do a lot of things myself and my team was able to kind of keep, you know, hold the fort down. And um, this building is over four times bigger than our last building. And it's actually um, cheaper. I pay less than I did before on my other building. Um, so our monthly bills now, maybe, you know, the electric was a little more, some things like that was a little bit more than our other building, but um, it's ultimately this, about the same cost. So it wasn't like COVID, you know, when it wasn't like we'd just taken on a bunch more uh, expenditure or expenses right, and then right. got hit hard. So. Right. Um, like you were taking a big risk, getting a loan and all this other stuff. You were comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty, I was, I don't know. I'm always comfortable. <laughs> I just go, <laughs> you know, I'm one of those guys. I just don't think, I don't know. Maybe I, maybe it's dumb, but I just don't think I don't get too scared of that stuff. Like um, some guys are like, I don't know. It's a big investment. Maybe I should blah, blah, blah. I'm just like going, if I need it, let's go get it. You know, <laughs> we'll just do it. <laughs> so. it's, not, it's not wrong. Yeah, until it is. <laughs> and and then you're done. <laughs> and then you're done. <laughs> and then you start over yeah, and do something good, else. And then you know what? Good, you have yeah. a cool story to tell. <laughs> right. There you go. See, um, about power and your electric, you have solar. Yeah. You, you installed it, right? Yeah. So we just did. Um, so I had a company at my old shop that came in and they like, uh, they're through Ameren UE is our power company here. And um they, this company would come in, they look at all your lights and they go, okay, well, all these lights are terrible, you know, metal halide and stuff. And so they, they changed over everything in our old building to led. And, um, you know, they show you the projections and now you're going to save this much month and Ameren's going to cover so much on a grant and all these things. So, uh, so we did it at our old building. It worked out pretty, pretty well. Cause you know, my printers were like, Hey, we can see, <laughs> we have plenty of light now. This is nice. So, uh, we did all that it went well. We got to the new building. I called them when we were remodeling it. And I said, Hey, I need a lot of light. This building had like not, not very good lighting. So, um, they brought in these led lights and, um, we ended up doing, there's a lot, there's like 350 led lights or something like strips. Like I think they're four footers. Um, like our basement's just lined with them. We thought it was going to be obnoxious, but we love it because it's really really good down there. But this company came in and did that. And after they did the lighting, then they got back to me and said, Hey, we also do a solar program. If you'd be interested in talking about that. So they came in, their guy came in and he does all the calculations on here's how much you use. Here's how big of a system Ameren will give you. It was great because it was, a uh, they had a really good, they had like a 26% tax incentive, um, for anything that was paid at the end of last year, by the end of last year, which was huge. So, um, and then there was like a, like a 15 or $20,000 grant federal grant. And then Ameren's portion was about $15,000 that they give you. So, basically when they unfold this whole program in front of you, um, you have to come up with about, I don't know, I think it was like 95,000 or something to, to install it all. Um, but then over the next two years, essentially you've basically paid like 25,000 for it, which we've already gotten the grants and all that stuff. So, and the tax incentive. So, um, so it only costs you like 25 at the end costs about 25,000 after it's all said and done, but our, our power bills here, actually, that was one of the questions I wrote down a few questions for later for you guys, but I was going to ask kind of like what your, you know, what your power bills were, what utility <laughs> bills, because we were, we were like about a thousand dollars a month here or something like that. Um, which I don't think is terrible, but, but now the, the, we just turned solar on like four weeks ago. So we don't expect to ever have another bill again, because we were able to put a bigger, 
we were able to put, we were able to kind of fool them and put in a bigger system than what we really needed. Um, because they didn't have 12 months worth of bills to go off of because we hadn't been here long enough. So we were telling them like, Hey, we want to add like two or three presses and all these dryer, you know, all this other stuff. Well, that's smart. I mean, power. like yeah. what if you expanded, you know, you want to make sure. Right. Talk, right. Is, um, does that store the power for you? Like over, can you store it? No, no, it's a, it's a bi-directional meter. So basically, um, you know, like today we didn't have, you know, we weren't working, but if it were a sunny day and we stored like, you know, a hundred kilowatts of power or thousand, whatever it is. Um, then basically tomorrow, if it were a cloudy day, we can pull that thousand back. So it's like one-to-one, -one, right. They owe us exactly what we gave them. If we have anything over at the end of the month, it, it zeroes out every 30 days. So if we have anything over at the end of the month, they pay us like, I think two cents per kilowatt hour, which they charge you like eight cents per kilowatt hour, but it's still something. And right. we really right. think we're, we were just doing it like going, Hey, let's get free electric. Yeah. So I've actually been looking into it for a couple of years because, um, I just trying to make things more efficient and the same thing yeah. we went through and did as much efficiencies as possible. Yeah. Changed over all our heating units to all the like electric ductless units. Yeah. Yep. Um, did all the LEDs to as much as possible. Um, and I was looking into solar and I've talked to a couple companies and I'm trying to decide on what I'm, what I want to do. And some companies are like that where they're like, Oh, here's a grant and mm -hmm. all this other stuff. And we could put, cause I have like a really long building and I have a ton mm -hmm. of sun. Like it goes right yeah, over. You'd be in perfect. Right. Yeah. So I was like, I could do that and put panels all over the roof of this place or I can buy solar panels and have them on a solar farm. So I don't right. know if you guys have a lot of solar farms there, but here in New York, like where I live, they're like everywhere now, like huge fields, just full of solar panels. Hmm. Um, no, not really here. I mean, most people are just doing the roof here, you know, uh, no, like, like here, like even like right down the road, there's like massive fields that used to like have corn or whatever. Yeah. They're, growing on them. they're all solar yeah. panels. Oh, so, wow. you can, so you can basically go to this company and be like, Hey, I want to buy X amount of solar. Power panels many. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. And they, they have them on the farm there. Like you buy them, they put them on the farm and then they maintain them and do all the stuff. That's awesome. Um, you just like get the power, yeah. you get the power. I mean, it's not like it's coming directly from that panel to your building. It's sure. going to nice egg and then, yeah. you know, they're just taking it off of your bill or whatever it is. But yeah. I like that idea because then I don't have to maintain them on the roof. I don't mm -hmm. have anybody screwing anything into the roof. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you never know what's going to happen. So it's nice sure. to be like, oh, it's on a farm. So I think that's the route we're going to go. It's just buy yeah. panels on a farm. And For then, sure. Uh, yeah, that's, um, that actually does sound, I mean, that sounds awesome if they had something like that here, but because that was one of my concerns, I guess, is we're like, hey, we just put like a $20,000 roof on the place. So mm -hmm. um, we're going to drill how many holes? I'm just it? terrified <laughs> of like being a, <laughs> being a business owner with owning the building. It's just one more hole in your roof. That's like, yeah. Hope yeah. it doesn't leak. You know what I mean? Like, sure, sure. You're always thinking well, about that. And then what do you do when you eventually need a new roof? Do you have to take all the panels yeah. off, put a new roof on, put the panels yeah. back on? Well, we did, um, we did a metal roof, uh, before that, so that we were thinking like, let's go about as, you know, with as heavy of roof as we can so that right. we don't have to That's what we deal have. with that. Like, I think the solar panels are supposed to last 20 to 30 years, something like that before you would and a metal, roof, a metal roof technically is supposed to last 40 years. Yeah, exactly. So we were like, and honestly, I don't foresee owning the building that long. I think that, um, matter of fact, we, you know, and so I was joking about earlier, we've been here like one year and <laughs> Kathy and I stood down there the other day and went, okay, so want to just look for another one? Cause this one's too small now. <laughs> Uh, it's weird how that I is, know. you know, the one, the one you have, when you, ever you expand, it seems like you fill it up almost yeah, the next quick. day, you know, it's pretty yeah, quick. I, know. I have a couple of questions about the solar. Like one yeah. is, um, three phase, I guess there's some sort of converter you, it, you can obviously run. You don't have, mm -hmm. you're not stuck with single phase, right? You can use three phase. I'm stuck with single phase, but my building only had single phase. That's the biggest uh, drawback to this building when I moved in here. Now our other building only had single phase. So like my flashes are, um, smaller chilies that will run on single phase and all that kind of stuff. But we, um, that was, that's probably the biggest thing that sucks is I don't have three phase. Could you not um, put three phase in? 
You could, but it was going to be, um, they were going to charge like 25 grand just to bring it from like right down the road to here. And, um, and then that's just to get it here. And then you'd have to change a lot of stuff over interior in the building. We had to do that. Like when I, when I bought this building and when I was getting the autos and stuff, I, I had to pay to put three faves in. And like you said, all new, all new panel, new map. Everything. Yeah. Luckily I was only two poles away. Mm-hmm. from where I needed. And it was like 1500 bucks per pole. I think it was. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it was like three grand to get it to the building. And then it was obviously mm-hmm. like whatever it was to get it ran in, put yeah. new panels in and new everything, and whatever yeah. else. Um, That's awesome. yeah, I mean, it wasn't too bad. It was just one of those things. Like I felt like I definitely You're gonna need it because of yeah. everything I wanted to put in here. So I make I it so much easier when you order equipment, right? To order it in three oh, days. Man. It's like such a hassle. Whenever yeah. you're saying, like oh yeah, this flash is, yeah, right? Yeah. And that's the thing. I, I kept wondering, I'm like, going, well, do they just make, I know they make three-phase converters for different, you know, like I'd say a compressor or something like that. But what I've been told from M&R was, you know, that um, the flashes don't like to run on those converters because I guess it's not clean enough power or something and with the bulbs. So um, now I don't know, maybe, maybe someone knows more about that than, than I've been told, but it'd be nice if I could get bigger flashes and run them on a converter or something. But what we did when we did solar is we had them bring in another 400 amp panel. So now we have three 400 amp panels that we can, so we essentially have a panel with really only one flash on it right now. So we can kind of add to that one if, you know, if lots we of space. Pressers. Yeah, lots of space in there. Um, the, other th- the other question about solar is who maintains it? So, and, and what kind of warranty does it have? You know, so you install mm-hmm. this and it only ends up costing you 25,000, but how long is it warrantied? For how long is it good for? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it, so, okay. So you're, I, I think, so there's like a five year parts sort of in labor warranty. Right. Um, but the components, you know, when you really get to looking at the components, there's not, it's not as, um, there's not as much stuff as you would think. Right. You know, there's the main sort of inverters or the exchangers or whatever that are inside of the building. And those are, um, those look pretty difficult, but other than that, <laughs> it's just wire and those panels that they just plug into, right? So if a panel burns out or if something like that happens, you would just replace that panel. Um, and so the company takes care of it for so long after that, I would imagine it's on, you know, it's going to be on us, but you'd like to think that, you know, the whole system wouldn't just go out, you know, they've kind of, right. they've, they've advanced that technology so much now that, um, with, with so many cars and stuff like that, that they've got it kind of figured out pretty well from my, that's what my guy, even my electrician that was installing it, he installs lots of solar panel, like commercial stuff. Like he was showing me like drone footage of all these, these huge commercial buildings that's just lined with panels on top. And, um, and he's like, yeah, these, you know, he goes, these panels, you just never have any issue with them, you know? Well, and the nice thing too, is that, I mean, it sounds like anyway, your ROI is going to be 25 months. It's huge. If you are, if you're spending a thousand a month, 25 months later, that's 25,000. And now you're going to mm-hmm. spend zero. Right. Mm-hmm. So as long as you make yeah. it to month 26, then you're good. It, it's worth yeah. it. <laughs> that's how I look at things, Andy. I go, that's exactly it. I go like, you know, I need like three or four years and then everything's free. <laughs> After that, you know, maybe not even that long less really. And that's so. exactly when all your new everything breaks, breakers <laughs> break and fry and then you I know. Do it all over again. I'll tell it's you what, like, so it's just like buying a brand new car. You buy a new car. Yeah. People are like, Oh, I wouldn't do a lease program because you know, you're always going to have a car payment. And it's like, as yeah. soon as you pay that car off, you know what happens? Shit yeah, breaks. Pulled, and then you have to buy a new car. Yeah. I know. Well, the other day, I, I don't remember if Andy texted me or I text him, but I, text crying going all day long. My eye image was messed up and, uh, I fought it all day long and I thought it was going to be, I didn't know if it was going to be a board or print head or what, but it was just a crazy, you know, it doesn't break until you need it. Right. So we need to image like 50 screens Friday. And that's basically what we were planning on doing first thing in the morning. And then it like, isn't printing at all, like no nozzle checks, no nothing. So that night we had had, 
when we went down there, the power had been tripped, like the computer was off for the eye image. And so we had had a power surge or a trip or we had a storm that night. So, so then like the first thing that comes to mind is I'm like, are you kidding me? This freaking solar. Like I thought, how am I even getting a power outage? I thought like I'm making my own damn power. Like, you know, like what's <laughs> going, so I'm calling my solar guy going in. So, you know, my 30 something thousand dollar printer in the dark room isn't working. And it, that's never happened before until we turned on these solar panels. Do you think that has anything to do with it? <laughs> you know, <laughs> which he assured me that it can't, it wasn't that, you know? <laughs> so I'm curious um, what, uh, what ended up happening. Cause we had something similar not that long ago and we called them an R and basically what happened is when the power went out, it mm -hmm. reset all our settings. Okay. And then I called them an R and they just like, when it, they do the thing where they just like, mm -hmm. yeah, like remote air. And then yeah. he just like, you know, did a bunch of little things, code and like changed some mm -hmm. settings and then it, it worked totally fine. Again. Boom. No, ours was definitely um, something mechanic. It was a, well, I'm assuming this is what it was. So he tells me, he goes, we did all that. He remoted in and he looks and he goes, no, you have good negative pressure. You have good this, you have good, all these things. Um, it was uh, Terry, by the way. Thanks, Terry. You helped me out a lot on Friday. So he, uh, he did a lot of things. We couldn't figure it out. I said, look, I'm down until this thing's up. So like, let me just buy every part that it could be <laughs> so that I can have it here Monday <laughs> and like, we can go to work on this thing. So, um, because we literally just sold like, I don't know, a month ago, we sold our 4880 and all of our like backup plan because we had never used the backup plan in three years. So I'm like, we don't need the backup plan while it still prints. Let's sell it, you know? So we did all that, got rid of it. And then, um, so I ordered a print head um, a, the board, the print print head board, you know, the, mm -hmm. and then, uh, he, at the very last thing he goes also check the data cable that goes to the board, the main cable that goes to the, from the computer to the board. He goes, sometimes those things move a lot. Sometimes it's that. So I literally went in as a joke and I go, I told my guy that was working on it with me, Mark, I said, I'm just going to unplug the data cable, plug it back in. And then I like kind of gave it a little smack on the side of the machine, like just as a, <laughs> well, you, as, like, as one like, does. Come on, baby. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it started. It printed a perfect nozzle check, <laughs> and I went, "What, <laughs> dude? Go, that's print screens." Because we, yeah. uh, again, we had that issue where it went down because of the power, and then mm -hmm. right after that, we started getting like we were printing and then every so often we would get like a double image, like it would double print mm. and they were like, you know, like a quarter inch off from each other. So it was, it was really weird looking and it would only happen randomly. And then slowly mm -hmm. it started to like happen more and more. It'd be like one a week and then it turned into like five a week and then it turned into like wow. a day. And then, uh, same thing. I called them an R they, they did some troubleshooting and then I ended up ordering like, five parts like it has to be one of these parts mm -hmm. and the very first thing we did was the data cable yeah and uh plugged in the new data cable has print flawlessly ever since so you know what you just like as you were just saying that i'm like my mind's spinning because for whatever reason there was there's two things i was going to talk to you guys about today <laughs> two issues but i didn't want i don't know i don't want to go like uh like our eye image ever since we've gotten it randomly one job will be like a quarter inch off something's off not even close right and it happened well it happened about maybe six months after we'd been after we'd had it right so the guys just one day my printer comes up or one of my printers goes hey look man this thing didn't try lock it's like way off and i'm like well you know who knows somebody maybe didn't have it touching you know we bang on the thing to get them in the, you know whatever so um but then it started happening like you exactly what you were just saying. Like it was like, it seemed like it got worse for a while and then it got better to where like we would go two months and everything lined up, you know, pretty much on the money. And then randomly here's this job that's off. So what happens is real quickly, your printers don't trust Trilock anymore. And they like, they're setting up everything, but now they're going through the old, old school way. They're bringing up everything and checking it before they print and everything. And, um, and it's still to this day, my guy just the other night, um, my night shift guy said, Hey, this job didn't try lock where the shit off of the eye image, what we burned on Friday. And when I wiggled the data cable, it started printing. So now I'm thinking maybe I got a 
funky daddy data cable that I need to replace and maybe like, I'll I fix like, that problem. I like daddy cable better. Let's call it daddy, daddy cable. cable. Right. Daddy cable. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, it was funny cause I was talking to the tech support and I mean, shit happens. Uh, like you said, the print head goes yeah. back and forth a lot. It's kind mm-hmm. of constantly, you know, moving that wire or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. But one of the things I talked to them about and they were like, yeah, and I'm a Mac guy. Like every mm-hmm. computer we have here is Mac. And I really, I'm not into PCs at all because I feel like anytime I've owned a PC, it like breaks instantly or just doesn't work very well. Um, and the only PC we have in the shop is the one on the iImage. Um, yeah. And when I was talking to tech support, he was like, well, you know, things information has to come from that pc and then go into obviously the i image or whatever uh and they said that if you get like a powered usb uh thing instead of like coming out of the back of the computer it actually makes the data like faster and cleaner i don't know all the fun i'm not yeah so you just it's it's a better transfer of the information or whatever um so after all those issues it just kind of seems like sometimes what happens is it's just like a computer glitch thing and information from the computer to the eye image gets yeah. and then you get those like weird prints or you get mm-hmm. you know like we were getting double images but it ended up being some kind of short in that data that data cable so um yeah i'm gonna that's check that out because we've been that's kind of what we were thinking too like so you know, again, we do, we do vinyl here too. So we're always working on, you know, we work on the HPs and a lot of different stuff upstairs with getting things to talk to one another and things like that. And that's what our guys were like going, it's gotta be software. First we thought right. it was when we had just switched to like creative cloud or whatever, uh, Adobe. And we were like, yeah. maybe it's something with Adobe that like, because it's now all internet based, it's not like, it's not sending the file properly or something's not right. Because I mean, we started having that problem a bunch and we're like, this sucks. We I'll, have to ask, just, I'll have to ask Brian oh, who deals with it every day, like our SEPS guy. Um, mm-hmm. We've had this issue, like the exact same issue you're having. And I think it's mm-hmm. literally just a an issue of, because he does the SEPS in one room and then he puts mm-hmm. it in the drive. So it's like in the yeah. cloud. And then yep. it's downloaded from that to the computer in the... Um, in the dark room. In the dark room. And then it's yeah. going from there to the machine. So I feel like yeah, just once in a while, there's like a weird glitch somewhere and it just throws yeah. a file off somewhere. So I, the one thing I want to try is just getting that USB, like the powered one, not just a random USB hub, but like a powered one that has a little yeah. power and see if that kind of cleans it up a little bit. It, I mean, we burn, you know, tons of screens a day and it's kind mm-hmm. of like, you get one here and there that's weird. And then I'll just come into Brian and say, Hey, this one didn't work. He just re uploads it. And then we put mm-hmm. it in the exact same way and it prints totally yeah. fine. And so to me, it's fine. just like, what I think happened? We did that too. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think we did that too. And that's how we figured out it was something software because we were like, Hey, resend this and let's see what happens. Like if you were doing we every, if you were doing every job and it was messed up every time, then I'd be like, mm-hmm. yeah, something's wrong with the machine. It's, like ridiculous. it's totally yeah. random. And then if yeah. they re-upload the exact same artwork and it works, it seems like it's just like a transfer issue. Yeah, for sure. Well, like when you get someone, that. Someone was playing World of Warcraft in the office when they shouldn't have been. <laughs> and it was just like sucked up all the data. A thousand robots got their kill command. <laughs> <laughs> right. And my exactly. file's off. <laughs> right. That's so, John, yes. which came first, screen Uh-oh. printing or vinyl? Screen printing. Um, screen printing came first. So I, um, I'm a, well, I'm a screen printer. <laughs> well, I guess I'm a vinyl guy too, but I don't know. Um, I, I started out as a screen printer. I kind of fell in love with that. Um, I had a friend that was doing it and she was not, she was having a lot of issues and I started like going on YouTube and find out why she was having issues and just trying to help her. And, and, uh, I kind of just started liking it. You know, it was like, wow, this is cool. Same thing. I'd been in bands. I bought band shirts and never really paid much attention to like that whole process. But then, um, as I started figuring it out, I'm like, man, this is pretty cool. I like doing this, you know, it's, um, it's artsy, but I can't draw. So I'm like, you know, I can, this is a way I can do art. So, um, fast forward, I was in construction at that time too. So I was like, Hey, I'm going to, um, I can sell all kinds of work, right? Like all these guys I work with will buy shirts from me. And, um, so I was, I was selling lots of jobs and then bars we were playing and things like that. I was selling shirts. And, um, 
and she was and her part of the deal was like, Hey, just print these shirts, you know, we're going to make money. And she was kind of falling through on that a little bit. So, so it ended up being, I'd work all day. Then I'd go out and print shirts all night. Um, and, um, she was doing this at, uh, her, my friend at her mom's house. And so then I was like, Hey, just let me buy your stuff from you. And she had like some, some, you know, it was just a cheap, like a loss and press and a little loss and dryer and some things. And, uh, so, and I had a shop at my house that was my grandfather's radiator shop that I had talked about, you know, it, it was like 2,300 square feet shop, you know, just a big garage. My garage was bigger than my house. So I'm like, it's perfect. I'll just move this stuff out there and start doing it. So I'd work all day and then I'd come home and I'd print t-shirts all night and, um, did that for a long time. And then I guess how we really took off was you guys were talking about in a couple episodes, um, back where you were talking about like Corey leagues and baseball leagues and things like that. We had a local like sports league, youth sports league. That was, there was like 600 kids involved in this league. And, um, so I went to him and I said, Hey, let me, you know, give me a shot at doing all your baseball jerseys and all your stuff. And they were like, I knew a few of the people on the board and they were like, dude, listen, everybody we have do this screws it up, right? Like they never get it right. It's always a mess. We never get the stuff on time. So you don't even, I'm telling you, you don't want this work. Our turnaround times are too fast. It's too much stuff. So I'm like, no, I, I want it. Give it to me, you know? So they did. And, um, and we knocked it out. And so we started there, you know, and we started, that's when we really started doing well. And, um, I quit my other gig and just focused on it like hundred percent. And then, you know, the rest is kind of history. We just sort of like kept growing and growing from there. Um, that point, a long, that point where you quit your gig and decided to go all in on screen printing, mm-hmm. you were busy enough, I guess you figured you're like, Hey, I'm, you ran the numbers and you're like, I can, I can pay all my bills and everything with just with the screen printing now. Yeah. Well, back then I, you know, I didn't need much. Um, he already told me he just thinks about what he wants to do and does it. He doesn't think about all I the try. Action. I try to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't always work out that way, Dylan, but sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I get lucky. But uh, no, that's kind of what it was. It was like, um, I my original goal, which sounds really funny now, is I was like, if I could make like $40,000 printing t shirts for this first year, like, I only need like really half of that to like, barely get by, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I think I could do it, you know, cause half of it's going to be materials and stuff like that. You know, I'm like, oh, and I think I could scrape by if I can hit that number. And, um, and in that first year, I think I probably almost doubled that number. So then I was like, yeah, this is killer. Let's I think that's a question everybody, or a thought at least that goes through everyone's mind is like, you know, when you're getting ready to make the leap into all in on screen printing or, or whatever, mm-hmm. You always think to yourself, you know, if I just made 20,000 or whatever that number mm-hmm. is, it'll be mm-hmm. enough because it's better than what I'm doing now. You know, like sure. maybe, maybe it's not as much money, you know, maybe I'll, um, yeah. it's less money, but I'll be way happier. You know what I mean? Because I really yeah. like screen printing and I really like this thing. I don't have to go to work and answer to this yeah. asshole. Or whatever. Yeah, and so you have sure. that number in your head and you're always like, okay, you know, as long as I just make that and yeah. then you get, you get going and, and you crush it, you know, like it happens yeah. pretty quick. Well, and everybody thought I was crazy because, you know, the truth is I was coming from a job that I made good money. Um, I was, a, I had worked my way up to, you know, I was pretty much a drive around boss uh, for a construction company for a friend, a good friend of mine. And, um, I mean, I had like a company truck, I could get equipment anytime I wanted it. I, I mean, I made like, you know, good, pretty good money. Um, and had this job, but I, I don't know. I was just, it wasn't, thinking, it like, wasn't fulfilling though. It was just a job. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't. And I'm going, okay, well, I'm always going to make that money and I'm always going to work for my, my buddy. And so I don't know, I just, some things switched up there and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go for it and just do it. So Hell yeah. glad I did. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Um, now Andy, you can cover your ears. Cause I want to know, I want to know this from <laughs> John's side. Um, <laughs> What's the, uh, what's the word on the street about shirt Kong in your area to, to, to people, <laughs> are people like, Oh God, don't go over there. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> no, it's really not that. I guess, um, I'll, I'll be, I'll be nice instead of just being hungry, but, um, no, man, I think, um, so listen, when we first heard, well, I mean, 
so I think we start, so we started in 07 or 08, something like that. I had a lot going on, um, starting out, but when I first heard of, you know, like actually I first heard of, and I don't even know, Andy, I don't know if we've ever even talked about this, but I had a guy that worked for you that came and worked for me, uh, after he left you. Have we talked about this? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Andy's was his name just, Andy? Andy's Andy. just learning about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. No, Andy. no. I, I, his name was, was Andy. We actually, we actually called him Deuce because while well, he okay. was, he was the fact there's two Andys here. <laughs> so we just <laughs> called him funny. Deuce. He was a, that's yeah, funny. he was a designer here. Um, yeah. He was a, he was a good designer too. You know, but that's why you was, left, right? Is because you called him Deuce <laughs> every day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty well, sure. I think his, I think his story, he wanted to move. He actually, um, he worked here for a, few years and then he moved to like Perryville or which a town like further south right like he was he was from, from cl way close he was trying to, to get back there yeah yeah so so he um but no he he so that was when i first kind of started hearing about you know shirt sure, like again print shops can be close but you don't you don't even really have to cross paths. You know what I mean? Like you don't there's shops sometimes people go oh we went to this place and got t-shirts last time and I'm going never fucking heard of it, you know, <laughs> like, where's that at? And they're like, Oh, it's just right across, you know, it's over here, 10 minutes away. I'm like, oh, yeah, they're in this jiffy them. lube over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they drop stuff through the floor into the basement. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, um, that was when I first heard of it or whatever. And then, you know, I went to Instagram and started checking them out. Like to see, you know, you always do that, right? You go like, look, let's look at our competition. So right? <laughs> before, you, before you say anything else so that you can make All Dylan right. happy, just make him, make him, make him feel good. Say that you heard Shirk Kong sucked. <laughs> Come on. Let's I, hear had to, I, I had heard, to see like, for myself. I heard everything that came out of there was shit. <laughs> no, there we go. No, no, um, <laughs> no, actually. So when I started looking at it, I was like going, okay, wow, these guys are, you know, pretty legit. So like I started paying attention cause that's kind of how I like, um, I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to come off wrong, but that's how I like, we, we just work hard and do what we do. We try to be super good and high level at what we do. Um, and I try to, and I'll, and I'll try to learn from everybody. Right. But there's usually one thing that I think our business grew really well is because there wasn't a lot of good screen printers around and, um, or there wasn't people that were really doing the whole thing very well. And, um, sort of the more and more that I learned about Andy shop, the more and more I figured out they were, they were doing it all pretty well. And, um, and that he, he knew a lot so that, you know, I definitely, I have a lot of respect for Andy and what he does up there. So. Okay. When this yeah. is over, I'll get the real answer. Don't worry about it. Well, yeah, I'll call you, Dylan. <laughs> okay, cool. I'll call you. <laughs> no, no, it's funny. Well, like I, I uh, had a guy here the other day, and me and Andy might talk to him later. Uh, who used to own a shop, and I actually looked up to that shop. It was kind of like same scenario where you guys are somewhat near each other. Yeah. He had a shop, and he was around like a generation before me, kind of like a mm -hmm. ten year gap or whatever. And uh, I kind of looked up to his shop because it had similar vibes, similar like style. Mm -hmm. And we were doing printing a lot of the same kind of thing. And he decided one day he didn't want to do it anymore. And he sold the company mm -hmm. and uh, all this other stuff. But he was here the other day because uh, he actually moved back to Binghamton and his wife needed shirts for something. And he ordered them, came and hung out. And that's cool. We, we talked for a couple hours and it was funny because there's another shop I've talked about on here a few times that, uh, we don't really compete with anything, but they're like the other big shop in town. Sure. Uh, yeah. And uh, he was like, yeah, I actually uh, went to work there kind of as a consultant for a little while. And uh, it was funny because they brought him in to like kind of like help. I guess they're one of those shops that just wants to try to like create culture because everybody kind of hates working there. Yeah. And uh, he was just like, yeah, we want culture kind of like some of these shops and kind of like upstate merch and stuff. And it was just funny because like he told me that yeah. and I was like, that's hilarious. That's that, cool. like the one shop near us was just like, can you make us trying to be you? <laughs> 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 yeah. So, yeah. And that's the thing. Like, um, I really do like, honestly, and you know, Andy can hold his ears, but no, I think a lot about it. So we, it's, the, it's sort of the joke around like it's, so I started hanging out with Andy a little bit <clears throat> and we just talking and I love, um, I like having somebody that'll talk screen printing with me or just business in general. Hey, I like hey having, me too. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Well, I'm a little jealous of you, Dylan. I told Andy, but, um, <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm forever second fiddle. 
So, yeah, I get so to hear I get to hear his soft voice every week. <laughs> right. <laughs> so um, he doesn't. It, John doesn't cool. have any, uh, you know, sexy nicknames for me, though. Yeah, so no, don't worry I don't. about it. We don't we don't go there yet. Yeah, we don't go there. Yet. Not yet. Yeah. We're working but, on it. Nice. We're working on it. <laughs> we're we're about a pitcher of skinny margaritas away is about <laughs> it. So, <laughs> Dude, Andy's killing it up there. And I try to be, I'm sure that we have customers that we cross paths on. I couldn't name them. Um, cause I don't really look at that, but, um, I would never, you know what I mean? If it's kind of like, I guess you just have the unwritten rule of like, you know, mm-hmm. if, if somebody walked in my shop and was like, Oh yeah, we went to a shirt con last time and we were really unhappy with this or that. I would probably then text Andy and go, Hey dude, here's what I heard or whatever. I don't, I don't think that'll happen. I think he does a pretty good job with <laughs> that stuff, mm-hmm. but I mean, he may good. get, he may be getting like, more of those customers that said they just left logo. Dad. That kind of stuff. Same problem. That kind of stuff happens. I mean, you can't make everybody, everybody happy. Yeah. So, I mean, it does yeah. happen for sure. And I have, likewise, I have uh, respect for your shop too. I mean, your story that. is, is, is really inspiring. I mean, you said that your grandfather, um, had a radiator shop and he was an mm-hmm. entrepreneur, wasn't really, but I guess he was. And somehow, you know, passed that on to you, whether it was from you being raised by him yeah. or do you just have his genes? And, you know, yeah. like, because you have done a lot, you know, you had a lot of um, adversity, you know, and mm-hmm. I wanted to talk about um, that a little bit and the foundation yeah. you started. Also, um, that segue you built. Yeah. Uh, and, or actually, you didn't build a seg- segue, you turned it into something. <clears throat> Yeah. So, all right. So we'll, um, the, the craziest part of my, my, uh, story, I guess, going, going, and I'll try to make this as short as possible because it's a long story, but, um, start with what you when, had for breakfast. Yeah, right. I know. <laughs> I know. I, I wish I would have had bread, like a protein bar. <laughs> so, uh, but we, um, like, so I started in 07 and, um, and in 09, so only two years, we built for two years, we did pretty good. And, um, and I will say, I want to say this too. So my, my main lady that like, literally it's the person that I don't know if we all have this or not. I think Andy and Joanne, I think do most of their stuff, but like everybody has that person that's like, this business doesn't exist without her in my book uh, is Kathy. She's my aunt. And she's a lot more like my mom. And, um, she came to work for me like in 08. Like after the first year, when we got that big uh, contract with that athletic league and um, I'm like, Hey, Kathy, like, here's the scoop. I can't really afford to pay you. <laughs> and she goes, that's okay. I'll just help you out because um, she had just left another place and she was in financially good position. And she goes, I'll just help you out. I'll see where it goes. I said, okay. So like Kathy literally worked with me for like a year into 2009. Well, and almost into 2010, like for almost no money, you know, just to like help. Of course, I wasn't making a lot of money then either. We were like just doing our thing, just trying to get there. So in 2009, uh, it's September 18th to be exact. Um, it's a pretty pivotal day in my life, but we were businesses doing its thing. My son, who was 12 at the time, um, who was like, I had full custody of him and um, was like single dad and coached all his sports, coached basketball for all the local kids, did all this stuff. Like I was very involved. Um, He was having like a running issue. Long story short, he was kind of running. I was joking with him. I'm like, he was coming in like last and like line drills and stuff. I'm like, hey, dude your dad's the coach. You need to like not come in last. It looks bad, (laughs) (laughs) you know, work harder, (laughs) you know? And so, uh, he's like, dad, I'm trying, I just can't stretch. I can't this, I can't that. So we started looking into like, maybe there's an issue and we thought it was something simple. And then fast forward to September 18th, 2009, uh, we had one doctor that said, Hey, we were just going to send you in for an MRI real quick and see if we're not missing something. And, um, so we did that. It was a Friday, a beautiful day. It was a cards cub game that night we had tickets for, which is a big deal in St. Louis. And, um, so we're like going, Hey, sweet, I'm going to get the day off work. Kathy's going to run the shop. And then like, we're just going to go to this doctor, do this, whatever test we got to do. And then we're like going to go to lunch and hang out all day and go to cards cubs tonight. It's going to be awesome. And we went in and did an MRI, which I didn't know much about at the time. And then we're in the waiting room and I have a, a doctor come out and he looks pretty like, nervous, I guess. And he comes up to me and he goes, are you John's dad? And I said, yeah. And he goes, Hey, this is at St. Louis children's hospital. He goes, Hey, we need to go up to the fourth floor and talk to a neurosurgeon. 
like right away. And I'm like, okay, what's, what's going on? And he goes, um, your son has four brain tumors. And I'm like, like, so now Johnny, my son is like looking at me like, um, you know, like what, (laughs) what did he just say? (laughs) You know? And, uh, and I'm about ready, you know, I'm like, just, you can't even imagine the feeling. And then, um, it was, it was crazy. So we, um, we hop in an elevator and rush right to the fourth floor. And now we're sitting in, um, an office waiting for a neurosurgeon to come in and tell us what's going on. And to make it even worse, um, a girl that I had dated for a long time, who Johnny was uh, close with, her father had died of a brain tumor, you know, and we had always heard that story. Right. And he only, um, his was a pretty severe tumor and, and he only made it like six months. So now you have a 12 year old that's always heard that story that just heard he has four brain tumors. <laughs> so, um, so we went up, uh, we spoke with the doctor, the doctor said, Hey, um, you know, at any rate, it's not good. We don't know what it is. We have to do a biopsy. We need to do surgery. Um, I'm thinking, so, you know, again, my life hadn't, it was just first changed that way. So I'm like, so surgery in like what, like a month or something. They're like, no, like Monday at 8 AM, we have to go and do brain surgery and do biopsies of these tumors and all this stuff. So, so I did that. And again, we don't know what we're going to get. And, um, fortunately, um, the good and bad news was the good news was they were a, um, the big word, which nobody will care about, but it's pilocytic astrocytoma. It means it's a, it's the most common type of childhood brain tumor, but most kids only ever get one. And because Johnny had four, um, it was very rare. Like they had only heard of maybe, you know, a dozen kids that have ever had multiples of this type of tumor. So they can grow back. They, well, they don't, they don't necessarily grow back, but they also don't necessarily leave. Right. Like you can't, when kids only have one of those radiation works pretty well and it'll kind of shrink it down some and it'll kind of kill it off. But, um, when you have four, you can't do that much radiation really. You know what I mean? Because it's, it'll do too much damage to, to other vital stuff. And Johnny has three brain tumors in his, in his brain, but then one had moved to his lower spine. So it's like in his spinal column, like in his lower spine. So, um, so the doctor basically explained it. Like he goes, Hey, if you treat, he goes, we have to treat him like he's four kids with one tumor. So if you give four kids with one tumor, the same medicine, you hope that they all respond well, but chances are maybe two get better and two don't. And you have to do a different medicine for those two, or maybe one, you know what I mean? Like, it's just really random. So, um, so we had to, you know, like, it was just crazy. I mean, here we, here we are, you know? And so now I'm like, you're not even thinking about the business anymore, obviously, but like, but at the same time I'm going, I have to think about the bit, you know, I have to think about the business. So, so that started our journey, um, with that illness. And, um, it went, I mean, we did years of chemotherapies and some would work and some would not. And the tumors were still growing. And then one would, a couple would stop. And then the other ones would grow, you know, we went through a lot of that. And I mean, you know, my son, you know, I can't, they told him several times, you know, that the odds weren't good and he's not going to probably be here. And, and they just have to be unfortunately upfront with some of these kids. I, I, I watched some, I, we met so many kids that um, aren't here now. Uh, it was, it was very difficult, you know, to go through that, but the whole time, um, I just, I don't know. I never really let Johnny believe Johnny was a really bright kid. He was a really smart kid, almost too smart for his own good. So the unfortunate part was like, it's not like I could lie to him and tell him that, you know, Hey dude, yours isn't that bad. You're going to be okay. Cause he knew just as much as I did. And, um, mm-hmm. but I just, I don't know. I just kept convincing him that like, Hey, we're good. We'll make it through it. Don't worry about it. You know, we're going to, we'll get through. So, and we always did. We always, um, we always kind of won, you know, it it took a lot of work. We had to do a lot of damage to save his life. But, um, the biggest thing we went, um, so after about five years of treatment, so this all, this is all going on while I'm still running my business. So there was a lot of times when, I mean, I'm set up at the hospital, like my whole office is at the hospital, right. And I'm working there, I'm there all day. And Kathy would literally like, when it came to printing, she, she didn't really print. I did. So, 
um, she would get everything scheduled, get everything ready to go. Um, we had an artist through some of this, we had hired an artist, um, who's been, he's been with me now, like 13 years. He's phenomenal. Um, Chris and, uh, he, so him and her would like do all this work and they would get everything ready to go. And then I would be at the hospital all day long with Johnny. And then she would literally go shower, come to the hospital and I would leave and go to the shop and like print for like five or six hours and get everything done. Then I would shower, grab clothes, go back to the hospital. And then she would leave. Like we just teamed up, you know, you did that so on we, and off for five years. No, 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 no. We did that like at different times. Like he wasn't always in the hospital, but like when, I mean, so Johnny's had, gosh, I lost count. He's had 13 or 14 brain surgeries. Um, and since this started, um, till like, till about four years ago was the last time he had a surgery. Um, he has like, there's all kinds of other things that go along with it. Right. Like, so his tumor was in a spot where it keeps your spinal fluid from draining down your spine properly. So then they have to put in a shunt, which is like a, you know, like a tube that basically sheds right. that spinal fluid away. And, and then, and Johnny has like three of those still now. And so then like, once you have that in there, you have to keep it working. So then that takes maintenance and like, and I mean, crazy surgeries, like, like, like they cut a bone out of the back of his skull and go in and do all their work and close it back up. And, you know, like, so it's crazy. Like the amount of stuff that we did to the kid to save his life, um, you know, he's, 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 he's right now. So I'd, you know, make it a happy story. He's 22 or three. I think he's 23 you get now. This right. <laughs> I, know. I think he's 23 now, I think. And uh and he he's been in a wheelchair now for about five years. The tumor in his lower spine, as he kind of hit his growth spurt, it was crazy. My my wife and I we got married five years ago or almost six. And and um he walked in our wedding at our like lake house, like up and down all these stairs, and everything was fine. Like, um, and then like within two weeks, his legs started turning off, basically. Like, just like he could he like could barely make it up a flight of stairs. And then he could barely get up and walk across the room. And we're like, dude, what's going on? And he's like, I don't know. And, and so we thought, uh oh, it's like one of the tumors grow regrowing again, or what's going on? And all this is from he did a, a really heavy radiation, which was proton radiation. Um, he did that in Bloomington, Indiana at IU health. And, um, we really, it was a blessing. We met a doctor that, uh, uh, Dr. Jeffrey Buxbaum, I'll never forget. Cause he really saved Johnny's life. He, um, we met him on a whim. They, at one point they told me, um, cause this is a crazy story. I have to t say this, but at one point they said, Hey, listen, your son needs uh, proton radiation and he's going to need it like in the next two weeks or, or it, he's not going to have a good outcome. And I, and I'm like, okay, so where do I, our insurance wouldn't cover it, you know? Um, so I'm calling places and they're going like MD Anderson in Texas said, Hey, you know, you're gonna have to bring like 300 grand with you for us to even start making the, the, the orifices and all the stuff that we need to shoot this proton radiation and all these things. And so I'm literally on the phone with, you know, guys that have that kind of money. And isn't and that so, like, isn't that so fucking ridiculous that you have to make that decision of like, Oh, yeah. this is my son. And they're like, you're telling me I can't come do this and get this thing to save him. Yeah. $300,000. I'm not, I'm not the type of guy. I don't think any of us are. I think people, I think entrepreneurs aren't the type of guy, but I'm not like, like, I just don't like to hear the word. No. Right. Like if you tell yeah, me yeah, you yeah. can't have something, I'm like, yeah, bullshit. Watch, I'll figure it out. So they were like, it's going to be 300,000 even get started, sir. And blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't think you understand. They just told me that if my son doesn't get this in like two weeks, um, you know, he's not going to be here. And she's like, I I'm really sorry. I don't know what, you know, and I'm like, so I'm coming up, with, trying to come up with the money. And I'm like, literally, this is like a, a Thursday night that this is happening. And, um, and, and I get a phone call and it's a, it's a doc. It's Dr. Buck's mom. I get a phone call and he says, um, he goes, Hey, I've talked to your neurosurgeon, um, at children's hospital. And he's a friend of mine. We went to college together and he goes, uh, he told me your story and he told me that your son is an amazing kid and all these things that he's already like gotten through. And he says that you guys have an amazing story and blah, blah, blah. And he goes, I think I can help your son but I have a problem. I go, what's that? He goes, the problem is I'm leaving tomorrow morning at 8am for like a week long 
vacation. And he goes, and I hate to even say that to you because it sounds pretty minimal compared to what you're doing. He goes, but we have to wait a week on setting up this proton treatment. And he goes, I have a treatment that I think could help your son. He goes, now, I don't know if I'm going to ultimately save his life forever, but I think I can help him. And he goes, and I'm the only one he goes in our medical facility. We don't take your insurance, but it's already covered. Like he goes, he goes, I can make so much money on guys that have prostate cancer that I can help your son. <laughs> and he goes, but you need to be here at like 6:45 tomorrow morning in Bloomington, Indiana, so that we can start setting this up. And then my staff can get everything set up while I'm on my vacation. And then we'll start the day I get back. And I said, see you at 6:45." And so oh, yeah. we packed a bag, headed to Bloomington, um, met Dr. Bucksbaum. He was a, he was a, just a blessing. And we, he, um, the treatment that he did on Johnny, most people, most people and kids, first of all, proton radiation is insane. I don't know if, I mean, it's just insane. Like it's, it looks like something out of a, like a, like a carnival. It's like a carnival ride. Like you put a person on this board and then there's this huge gantry that goes around. It's just insane what they're doing. And, um, and this facility that he was at was an old NASA facility. They radiated everything that's been to the moon. Basically they would radiate it here so that it could go to the moon and like, and you're hearing all this and you're going, wait, what? is this even what's going on? <laughs> he, most, most kids or people with what Johnny had going on, get like three, two to three fields of radiation, like where they go into different areas. And Johnny got like 32 or 34, something like that. Like he set the record at this place. And they made Dr. Buxbaum invented like a carbon fiber board for him to lay on so that they could do proton radiation through the board um, to do multiple angles. And well, it was just insane. I mean, your approach to, you know, to business, I mean, mm -hmm. it makes sense that you made it work. You know, you found a way, like you were saying earlier, mm -hmm. you know, like you just dove into things and you just figured it out. I mean, it sounds like in yeah. a, um, you did the same thing here. And then you, you yeah. started to talk about that, um, how he, he has been in a wheelchair. Yeah. Tell yeah. me about that segue real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. It's easy to get on a rant with that whole thing. It's such a long, <laughs> it's a crazy story. So long, but, um, hold on before you do that, everything's cool with him now though. Like he's, Yes. So he's in a wheelchair, but like, I mean, dude, Dylan, like he just, um, it was like three weeks ago, he just signed the paperwork on his own house and he lives on his own and he like, he's super independent and he drives and works and he works here and he does his own thing. And he like, he's like the youth leader at his church and all this stuff. Like he's, he's just a great kid. That's awesome. You know? Good. Yeah, he's awesome kid. I needed so, I needed the closure on that story. You yeah, can't go, you can't yeah, give me all yeah. that, and then not. he's doing he's doing very well. And you know, like you know, we would he's had stable tumors now for almost eight years um, after the proton radiation. And now the truth is, they said, like I said, we did do a lot of damage. He's not the same. He's he, you know his his brain doesn't work as good as it once did, and he does have a, some memory issues and some things like that. But. Um, but it's okay. He's still a great kid. And, and you know, everybody has something and you figure it out and you go on, but his, his legs went away about five years ago, right. When he was getting ready to go to college and it sucked. Cause he was like a killer student and it got like a full ride scholarship. And then as soon as he's getting ready to go is like, he literally went to college and then was like, you know, like, you know, here's your kid staying in the dorm with all of, you know, with his new found college buddies and you got to take him a walker because he can't, walk you know and then it went from a walker to like one of those like an old guy scooter thing you know i got him one of those on like craigslist or something and and he used that for a couple of weeks and then he called me he's like hey just come get me and i'm like why he's like this thing sucks i can't i get in an elevator he goes first of all like people are looking at me it's crazy i'm in an elevator it sucks I, you know i can't turn it around i can't back up i'm on this scooter thing like a mr mobility kind of thing yeah. Like a little ride around cart thing because he couldn't, um, he could stand and take a few steps, but he couldn't really walk, you know, like the distances yeah. you would need to on a campus. So, and he, and, but he wasn't quite in a wheelchair yet, <laughs> you know? So we're like trying to obviously not go into a wheelchair. We're trying to stay out of the wheelchair. So long story short, I go, we had a segue that we had bought a long time ago when he was doing one, some treatments that, and he got to where he couldn't walk very much. So I'm like, Hey, let's get a segue and you can ride it around and I can keep up with me and we'll go, you know, we can still go to Cardinal games and all this stuff. So, so we had this segue that we hadn't used in forever. It was just sitting in the garage. 
And my vinyl company or my, my vinyl side of my company, we work for like some huge race teams, like with some of the like best race car builders in the world. And, um, so I got with one of the fabricators, the local guy. And I said, Hey man, um, I have an idea for this thing and I think we can make it work. Can you help me build like this, basically a wheel, a segue into a wheelchair. Now at that time, there was a, there was a couple that were out that were something like that, but they were very different than the way ours worked. Like the problem with them is they were more like a scooter. I needed something that was literally like something you could be on all day long. And so, um, so I kind of designed this, this drawing and this plan and we started working on it together and we made the first one, which kind of looked a lot more like a race car. It had a nice little um, frame, <laughs> you know, and the legs came down to stop it and it did some things. And, um, and we sent them off to school on that. We took that to him and he's like, this thing's great. You know, I can like zip around school. It's super fast. Um, we made it. The biggest thing was it had a glide seat. So you could glide forward or back to like, stop. That's the problem with the segue is when you're standing up, you can, you, you lean really far forward. You can go fast but you can also stop quick. Well, the problem when you're sitting on it is your center of gravity is low. So it won't do those things fast. Like it, like if you're going on a steep hill, you wouldn't be able to get it to stop because you couldn't lean back far enough. <laughs> so we had to do a, we had to do a glide seat so you could move your weight. We had to do all this stuff. Right. So we kind of engineered this thing and made it and he went to school on it. So here's a kid that was in a walker and like his buddies, nobody's hanging out with them or anything like that because, um, you can't walk. And then like fast forward, like five months later, they did, he went to Maryville university here in St. Louis and, um, they did a Mr. Maryville contest, which is like a, like just a silly contest for the guys to do, you know, it's a, more of a popularity contest than anything. And, um, and he was the first freshman ever at Maryville to win the Mr. Maryville contest, which was kind of cool. <laughs> you know? So, so, then from there, we, we made two or three more versions of this and like really dialed it in very, very, very good. And, um, and then I started a company called seven mobility. Um, and we were making these wheel, making these segues into wheelchairs with that company. And, um, that's right. It was a lot of red tape. We don't have many of them out there, but it's funny because like our, our neurosurgeons and all of our doctors that, that know Johnny and know this chair, they're like, they're like, this thing's incredible. Like it's just the best thing ever. And, but yet you can't sell it because you know, it's just so much, you gotta have a lot of money to be able to do it. It's a modded segue, I guess. <laughs> it's yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. Well, I was asking, yeah. I was asking about the Mr. Mobility thing because, uh, do you, have you ever seen the Colin, Colin first channel on YouTube where he just makes like these crazy things? No, I haven't. You should check out. But Colin it sounds Furs like something I'd on love. YouTube. Yeah. So yeah, you definitely would. Uh, he made a sixty mile an hour mobility scooter. Nice. So nice. <laughs> you should nice. you should check that check that one out. I will. You just drive it down the highway. He just like yeah. rips through like uh, down the road. <laughs> I think it's like a like a runway or something. He takes it down. But yeah, he just builds awesome. like crazy stuff all the time. He's just this dude in his garage that used to be a plumber. And now he's awesome. like, has like, he has like one of those like massive YouTube followings, like millions of followers or whatever. Um, crazy, right? He just builds, he just builds like crazy shit, like every, you know, two weeks or yeah. whatever and makes a video. Um, it's kind of fun. Like even then it was, it was a good time building it, you know, cause it was like, okay, what else does it need? Let's make it have this. So let's make it have that. And the truth is what we really did by accident was we made something that was just like, I mean, it's for someone in a wheelchair, it's just game changer. I mean, it's like, it's just so game changer. It's not even funny. Like it's um, like Johnny now has been on his Segway chair uh, for like five years and like, it still works very well. I mean, he drives from it. He uses it every single day. He can, there's so many things he can do with this that like people in other um, like electric wheelchairs and things can't do. Matter of fact, we had a company here, a local company brought him. He was working at our old shop. And they brought out a chair that was like a, like an electric chair that you're in and it stands you up and does all, it was like $65,000 for this chair. Right. And he had a company that was going to give him one. Um, and they brought it out to do a demo at our shop and he gets in this thing and it, it's doing its thing, but like, you couldn't go over like a bump. Like if there was a two by four lane there, you, you can't go over that. You know, if there's something like, like a door threshold or something. Right. And the segue these things. Can. Oh Yeah. It'll run, it'll really? go right over it. Yeah. It's awesome. He does, he does sick jumps with it. 
<laughs> you can. So our Segway has a it has an air seat that has it's essentially essentially it's a like out of a like a small excavator like a heavy equipment air seat. Right, right, right. So it's got so he like airs it up so nice. Yeah, he can get up taller where he can be more eye level with people, which is a which is a big thing. Um, we met one lady that was going to get one for her husband. And she's like, since my husband's accident, like he's always down here and I, he used to be tall. And she goes, just for him to be able to look me in the eyes would be like the best thing ever, you know? And so things that you don't think about, you know, when you don't have right. that issue, but, but this air seat, like he can drive it off of a curb and like the air seat just kept, cause his spine's a little bit weak from a lot of the treatment. And so the air seat's perfect because like, I mean, so many things he likes to fish. So like he drives it down a boat ramp and the boat ramps tilted, but he's always level. So he can just sit there level and fish, you know, where you can't do that in a wheelchair. It's just things you don't think about, <laughs> you know, yeah. dude, that's so, Crazy. it's so awesome to hear like all the shit you've done while <laughs> having a screen printing business, not even a screen printing business, <laughs> right. a screen printing and vinyl. And yeah, I'm sure there's 95 other things you're doing because of what I've heard so far. <laughs> there's a couple. <laughs> well, it's just crazy. Like you think about, like even myself, like I've just like dove into this screen printing business and this is really the only project, like main yeah. big project I've had for, you know, all these years. And it's just like, I couldn't imagine yeah. being like dealing with the kid thing and then yeah. being like, oh, I'm going to build a fucking custom chair well, and then all these other things you've done. Like, it's crazy. Well, the truth is, and I, I wish I could take all the credit, but the truth is, um, the saying on my wall behind me has a lot of meaning because like, if I didn't have the team that I have here at Logo Daddy, like, and I mean, and I'm not just talking about Kathy, Kathy's huge in my life, but, um, I mean, all my guys, my guys have all been here pretty long term with me. Like, I don't know. We only have one person that's only been here. Well, I mean, we've hired a bunch of new people now, but, um, like everybody's been here long term and, um, and these guys, they know that I love them and they know that I know that they love me and they'll, they've helped me. You know, there's been so many times now, like, I mean, there's times where when I'd be out with Johnny, I can move away for three months and my shop keeps working, you know what I mean? And they, and they come to work sometimes knowing like, Oh, it's okay. You know, his kid's sick. That's why he's not here. So I'm going to come in and crush it for him and we're going to do a good job and we're going to, you know, and so I try to take care of them as best I can. And they, they do a well, good job taking care of me too. This is the perfect segue. <laughs> into I see what you did there. unintended into uh you know juggling uh, a lot of things and wearing a lot of hats i have a new job title i think uh, i think dylan you do too um nice. and, and here it is uh oh founder ceo reclaimer and nice. so um it's tough right now right i, I mean I don't, hiring I don't want that yeah title. I, I think you're, I think that is your title though, Dylan. Uh, I think you're going <laughs> to, maybe you don't want it, but sometimes, sometimes you have a title you don't I prefer want. screen tech. But, <laughs> <laughs> it looks better is, on the card. <laughs> that is pretty good. I like that screen tech that you feel, maybe you feel a little, I don't know. I reclaimer, that's, that's better than screen cleaner. Uh, yeah, it is. It is. But, but really, I mean, because it sound, kind of sounds green. Like I'm reclaiming this, I'm repurposing it. Yeah. <laughs> and so, <laughs> yeah. That's my new title because I'm cleaning a lot of screens right now and hiring, dude, like hiring is, is, it's is a major issue. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. And I know you just said you have some, some fresh uh, faces down there. How did you, yeah. are they family or, or what's going no. on? How did you find them? No, um, just Facebook, you know, putting out some social media ads and stuff like that. But it's crazy. Like you, I don't know. It's like, um, I, and I mentioned this to you. We, so I had four or five people that were going to start like literally just coming in and folding and bagging and tagging shirts. So we're working. We fortunately picked up a whale, a really good customer. And, um, so we've been working two shifts for like the last almost month and, um, which is crazy, but describe I those two shifts. These. Like what are the, what are the hours? So first shift is eight 30 to five. Um, and second shift is from four to 1230, um, in the morning. So, um, basically I like to overlap them because I kind of don't mind that second shift comes in and everybody's here because it just gives both teams an opportunity to kind of talk to each other and say, Hey, here's where I'm at. 
maybe here's an issue we were having. This still needs to go. Um, here's your stacks of shirts. I ran out of mediums and we need more tags for the extra, whatever it is, you know? So, so overlapping them, you lose a little bit of production, but not much, you know, they get in but and you get gain, a little talky, but you, you gain, gain communication, you know, because what if you do, they come in and start, yeah, they're all, they're all working on the same customer. Um, yeah. So, well, sometimes, so we have, um, we got a, we got a really nice customer that's by is like really, they're kind of kicking our ass right now in a good way. Um, we did for this customer just last month, we did now, now listen, I would also like to say you're right, Dylan, we are a vinyl company and a screen print company. So there's a lot going on on both ends of that deal. And, um, but in our screen print side, we only have one auto and one manual. I mean, we're not a really, um, we do a lot of work, but we're not a really big shop as far as we don't have a lot of autos. Now we do have all the, you know, we do have all the automation in the dark room, which makes everything a lot better, but we, um, we found this customer that like they've now ordered, I mean, it's over 20,000 shirts in the last month. And these shirts have a lot of them are inside tagged, uh, neck label. Um, they'll get a yoke print, a sleeve print on some of them and some of the front print. So a lot of times two, two to three locations, and then they have to all be folded, bagged, tagged, boxed, and then I deliver them. Um, and so we're trying to get that done on one auto, one manual. And I still have, if I could, I can't even tell you how much vinyl work we have right now. It's just insane. You know what like, I love about have, that though? I mean, what I like, we've gone through the same growing pains. You know, we had one auto mm -hmm. and then we had two autos and then three autos. Mm -hmm. And every time, having uh, not enough equipment, but too much work, it forces you to do a few things. One, it forces you into, you know, think create, you know, creatively, like you, mm -hmm. you came up with a second mm -hmm. shift, you know, you said, okay, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to run two shifts this is the only way mm -hmm. to get it done. It forces mm -hmm. you to really max out like your efficiency on that press, mm -hmm. not just in as far as press speed, like, Oh, can't we print faster? Cause it's not yeah. always about that. I mean, a lot of your, yeah. a lot of your time is lost in maybe setups, you know, yeah. and so you start to think of like, I think that's a natural way to do it. Like the best way to grow mm -hmm. is to not have five presses and then have enough work for one and then two and then three and then four and then five, yeah. but to have way too much work. Too much. Then, <laughs> yeah. isn't, isn't that good? Because then you're yeah. like, well, you know, if I got an eye image, then I could be quicker here. Or if I, be you know what I mean? There's here. just so yeah. many things you could do that if you do yeah. it that way, then you're ready for that next phase or so, that, yeah. that are like you, you're, I guess you're scaling properly. You know, the best mm -hmm. way to scale is to, uh, I think, do it the way you're, you're talking about to do it your way. You know, like right now yeah. you have, you've maxed out a lot of things, you know, you have a mm -hmm. auto, you have the eye image, you have, um, you're running two shifts and you're like, Oh my God, you know, how am I going to get yeah. this done? Before we maxed you out your old heat wave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, people don't realize that heat wave. I don't, they're not making it anymore, but that heat wave, yeah. that's an awesome. That's dryer. a beast. It's awesome. The beast. I feel like, like you a, need, uh, an inline folder bagger. Yeah. So and, we're and looking at that. I know I just listened to, uh, I was just listening to you guys. I'll talk about that. And so, yeah, I'm talking to a few people about that now and I'm waiting for, um, I'm waiting to see this new, what M and R's got coming and, um, to, before I do much, but, um, but I'm actually talking with uh, rock and a few guys about that because that's the thing is like, we, we literally in um, shoot in like seven work days last week. No, it was really only four shifts. So really in four shifts, we bagged um, and stickered over and folded <laughs> over. Uh, it was like almost 10,000 pieces. Yeah. You know, that's so too many to, I just this is all by hand, right? Them. It's too much. Yeah. It's yeah. too much to, to fold by hand. And so to break down, which we did the folder bagger situation, we to break it down one mm -hmm. more time. There's the one that Ron and Scott have mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that would actually help you at this point. You could buy three of them or whatever. You I, know what I mean? I texted like, him and I said, I'll buy three of them. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> what do you say? He was like, there, he said, sure. And, you know, he gave me the price. I don't want to name that price case. It changes for different people. But, uh, and then I was like, man, I don't know, because I'm going, do I want to put that, 
that money there. If I really know, ultimately I'm going to need more than that. You know, I love Ron and Scott and I would love to see more of their product sold, but I feel like if you're doing 10,000 pieces, yeah, it's too small a week. It's not what you need. Like I feel, I yeah. feel like M and R has the the one that they currently have, and they have the one mm-hmm. that they're coming out with. But I feel like the one that they're coming out with is it's a downscaled model. Like the the one they have does like you know the, usually I feel like M and R has a a tendency to overbuild things for mm-hmm. like doing a ton of stuff, and then they're like, oh yeah, there's shops that like need something a little less than this. A little less. Because it's overkill for what you know they need, but I feel like you actually need the one they currently have. Like you need the one that literally you can lay a shirt on, hit a button, comes through folded it's bag, done. and completely done. And like you can yeah. get a thing where it puts a label on at the end, like on the bag. Yeah. So yeah. you could literally just have someone lay a shirt flat, hit a button, it comes out folded, bagged, and barcoded in a box. Yeah. The trick, the trick that I'm, or the the issue that I'm having right now, it's not really an issue, but. You know, I was, I was talking with Andy about this privately, but we, you know, with this customer, what I'm really trying to do is, um, I can't really afford to slow play it a lot, but I also can't afford, you know, like, I don't want to, I joke around and I say like, we've been dating and all the dates have went really well, but like, you know, that could change. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're talking, um, you're talking with the new customer? With the new yeah, customer. You're saying you yeah. don't want to yeah, invest you, in, a, in a giant. I get it. Yeah. Uh, like I can, system because it all puts me almost away. out of room. Yeah, I, I would feel the exact like same way. Like I would try to do it as long as humanly possible. Yeah. But I feel like with the amount that you're doing, if you can forecast, you know, mm-hmm. you're going to work with this company for X amount of months or a year yep. or whatever it's going to yeah. be, you could do the math and be like, what is it costing mm-hmm. me right now? People wise, sure. time wise, like, yeah. will I achieve that ROI before yeah. I know this is going to be well, over tell with? me, Tell me if this is right, Go because on. we had... Uh, probably uh, too many margaritas when I, I think we were talking about this, <laughs> but you said that you thought about anyway, just approaching them and saying, and saying, Hey, you know, um, I want to be able to fulfill all of your orders. I want to be able to keep up with them all. However, I need to invest in some equipment. Um, I don't want to invest this equipment. And then all of a sudden you go away. So, you know, and I know oh, yeah. that we just talked about, yeah. I know that we just talked about handshake deals. Like, wouldn't that be cool? You can just yeah. go, Hey, so let's shake on yeah. it. Like you're going to order from me for the next yeah. year or whatever. Yeah. But, I don't um, feel like that's out of the question. I feel like that's it's not if, with this customer. If, if I talk to um, the top dog and, and he gave me his word, I would probably put a lot of money behind them. You the know, thing behind is, that though, too, is that you're telling them like, Hey, we're going to invest in efficiencies to a give you a better product and more timely. Yeah. Like yeah. I could probably get these fa- to you faster if I had yeah. that stuff. Yeah. I, yeah. That's, that's really, that was it, Andy. I, from what I remember that from of that night, so. <laughs> but we, uh, I blacked out for the second half. <laughs> yeah, I blacked out shortly after that and, and Julie drove home, but no, <laughs> um, we, I, I think that's it. I'm just, I'm really kind of, I really do think everything's going well. The good news is this, um, and I'll, which I'll just tell you this story because, um, Andy already knows it. So this is the bad, this is a bad story. Or this is like when, when you guys don't even have to ask me like, Hey, what's the worst thing that ever happened at your shop? Cause it happened like two weeks ago and I'll tell you about it. <laughs> yeah. So this is Dylan, this is going to, this is, this will really make you throw up. You so, thought you threw up earlier. It's going to really, this will do it. Double that. You're yeah, double cool, down cool. now. I can't. Yeah. Wait. So my big customer, um, they send us their artwork, right. Ready to go. They have a full art team and they send everything in and, um, they send it to us and we, you know, a lot of other printers that are printing for them probably don't touch their artwork. They just, they image it and go. Right. Um, but we have a full art department here and, you know, and my guy, my guy, Chris, who's been with me forever, I put him over this customer because he's just like my, he's my ace, right? Like he's done everything here. And so, and he's very, very thorough with things. All my guys are, but Chris just as much or more. So he looks at everything. Like he's the guy that most oftentimes I come up and I go, Chris, come on, man, I need this. Like you're taking too long. This is going. And he goes, Hey, it's gotta be, it's all gotta fit when we get it there. Right. For our vinyl, you know? So, so he's, he's just that guy. He's thorough with everything. So he looks over all their artwork they send in artwork for this specific shirt um, that they ordered like I think it was about 7,500 pieces um, first go around. And 
and it's real simple. It's got their core values on the back of the shirt and, um, and, and then a front print and whatever. So anyway, we look at it and he goes, Hey man, I found like their image is a little crooked. I went ahead and straightened that. Do we need to reproof that? I go, no, we're fine there. We found in the last seven or eight, six, seven months, we found a few mistakes that they've made small, but we were like, Hey, this was a, actually, this is a 60, 40. And you guys sent the inside label for a 50, 50. Do you want us to go ahead and change that? You know, something like that. And they're like, Oh yeah, good catch. You know, that kind of thing. So so anyway, we saw, we looked over everything else. There was a few words in there, in there, things that Chris looked over, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, we start printing this order. We're through two or three night, or, you know, two or three days and nights of printing this thing, right? Like we've printed over 5,000 pieces. It's like close to 5,500 pieces of this shirt. And I have a new kid that came in that night to fold and bag. So his name's uh, Brendan. I'll give him a little shout out. So Brendan comes in and I say, Hey, Brendan, here's how we do it. This is the thing, you know, you're going to be working with this person and so on and so forth. Like it was, it was on April fool's day is when it happened because <laughs> I left, Perfect. I left at like six o'clock that mm-hmm. night. And my printer texted me like 15 minutes later, a picture of the back of the shirt and loyalty, the L and the T are flip flopped on the word. And I go, ha ha, very funny. You know, like I know it's April fools, whatever. And my guy, Ron says, he goes, John, I think you need to come back. And I go, dude, tell me this is an April fools joke. Like these shirts don't aren't printed this way. Cause we've looked at this shirt. Everybody's looked at this shirt. I mean, we've printed over 5,000 on several shifts. Like can't even tell you how many people have seen this and we've looked at it and read it and whatever. And uh, he goes, I'm not kidding. You got to get back here. I come back. So we have, we, we had 50, almost 500 shirts with a misspelling on the back. And, and And they're done and ready to be back. Matter of fact, a lot of them were already back and boxed done. Yeah. And that guy, Brandon caught this, Like yes, this new guy, right? The new guy, he'd been there an hour. Okay, you promoted him to president right away. <laughs> right. He, right. You, 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 you go to him now, right? Like he writes yeah. your checks. Yeah, Brandon. Yeah, will you sign my check? <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, uh, so I'm like, I mean, so what I mean, happened? Like, are, are, that's not your fault, right? Like, that's so no, it's not. Um, ultimately, it's not right. But um, here's how. So this is what I was getting ready to say about this big customer. What I really, what gives me a lot of reassurance in them, and I think what gave them a lot of reassurance in me is that everything's good when everything's good. But then when it goes bad is when you find out how both parties are going to react to right, each other. Right. 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 So, um, so it went bad really quickly because now I have to call my contacts over there and say. Hey guys, I have some really bad news and this is not an April fool's joke. Uh, cause I would never do this to you, but we have a misspelling on the back of the shirt. And so they, I send them the photos and we, and they obviously call me immediately right back and they say, Oh my gosh, you know, we've, we might've sent, there was a file that had something wrong and they think they sent the wrong file. And she's like, you know, usually you guys catch this and I go, I know we do. And we, so we kind of, you know, and she goes, look, it's, it's totally our fault. We sent the wrong, we sent the file that was not good. Right. But my take is it is, it isn't really, it really wasn't our fault since they send the art, we print what they send, but we try to, I mean, obviously I want to catch all that stuff for my customer. I don't ever want to let something like that happen. And so we still felt a level of crappiness because we printed 5,000 shirts and didn't see it. Dude, it's almost one of those that sucks so bad, dude. It's almost like you, those little Facebook things that you see where like all the letters are messed up, but you still read it really well. (laughs) Mm. It was like that, you know, where you just, you're looking right. I mean, it's when you see it, it's so obvious as a printer though, you're looking at so many things, right? I mean, you're paying attention to so many different variables. You're like, Hey, is my ink clearing? Is it, are they registered and all these kind of things. And sometimes you miss the right in front of you thing. No. And that's, that couldn't be more true. If you're a screen printer and you're listening to this, that can't be more true. It's like, we're not necessarily. And sometimes that happens. Like the customer will send exactly your story. They'll send something misspelled. We'll go through the whole process, like literally art department to making screens, to putting on press, getting it approved by the sales (laughs) guy. And then going back out to actually print and the guy at the end of the dryer catching everything. We're not concerned with what's on the shirt. Like, it, mm-hmm. like 
in the graphic and like what's yeah. happening, we're yeah. more concerned with we had the right blanks and the colors look right. Exactly what Andy just said. Like mm -hmm. we're so focused on what we do every day. We're not yeah. like picking apart like your vision or your artwork or yes. whatever. It's like we're we're not looking yeah. at that. To yeah. add to this, I'm not too. even reading your core values. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to, add, to add to this too, this is why. Um, not not that you did anything wrong here, because I'm sure you went through your approval process too, and we we have the same issue. We'll mm -hmm. we'll print a shirt and it's wrong, and we'll have to reprint it. But we catch more, and I'm sure you have caught a lot too, just like you said. Mm -hmm. But this is why I love um, having more than one set of eyes at that end of the dryer when yeah. we proof read, because yeah. not just the printer and not just the quality control, but actually the designer too. If all three are yeah. actually staring at this first, you know, you have a greater yeah. chance anyway. Like we still miss stuff. You know, it still happens. It happens every week yeah. when it's something. But you have a greater oh, chance wow. of catching it when you have three people looking at it because yeah. the For designers sure. coming in and they're not looking at, oh, is it in register or anything, you For know, sure. that sort of stuff. Whereas that's what the printer's looking at. So I like different people looking at it for sure. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of <laughs> shitty to say, but like we have to think about ourselves and our business, but it's kind of like, yeah, it was their fault. And it, it kind of definitely takes weight off of your shoulders knowing like you didn't mess that up. Like they, mm -hmm. they mess that up. It sucks. It makes me want to throw up and all that other stuff. But like, mm -hmm. realistically, it's not on you, but it's the same with like, anytime a customer gives us something that they want us to type out or like names mm -hmm. on the back of a shirt yeah, or whatever. No. It's like, I make them triple get it approved yeah. with the customer. Like yeah. they'll say, yeah, it's approved. And I oh, like the email them again and be like, are you sure? Like you yeah. read through this, read not everything. just like a quick, yeah. like, yeah, it's approved. Hurry up and get it done. Yeah. Like, are yeah. you sure? Because I want to have that documented. So when it is messed up, I'm kind mm -hmm. of like, this it's is exactly you. why we sent this yeah. to you twice to like check and well, make sure. Well, John, you're in a this, spot right here. You know, you've got this, this whale of a customer, just like you were <laughs> yeah. saying, and yeah something's gone wrong. And so this is your chance. Mm -hmm. And what are you going to do? And how do you handle it? And it's kind of ultimately, like you said, their fault, but yeah. you feel a little responsible too, because you didn't catch it. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. so, so what's so what happens is, everyone, or is it I sad say, <laughs> yeah, it, it was okay. Um, we, it hurt. Look, I, I basically said to my customer, because we've built a nice relationship with um, this this person there, you know, who ultimately can supply us a lot of this work and ultimately can get us to the bigger people that can supply us even more work and so on and so forth. And so I say to her, I say, look, um, I know that you're taking responsibility and I appreciate that and that you'd sent the artwork, but we typically do catch these things and we feel a level of responsibility. Also, I said, look, we win as a team, we die as a team. So let me do this. Let me figure out exactly what it cost me to make these shirts. And that's all that I'm going to, that's the only bill I'm, you're going to see on these. And then even on the reprint of this shirt, because I know you're, they need these shirts, right? So then on the reprint of this shirt, I will, um, I'll pinch a little harder and we'll just take it down. Um, and honestly, we only really, I think we came off about 20 cents or something, which is a lot on an order that big, you know? Um, and so, so we, we squeezed a little on the next order for them and we, um, and we ultimately, what it ended up doing, it was about a $10,000 difference, right? So we basically gave $10,000 and said that would have been, you know, money we would have been making, but we're just going to do it at cost essentially for you on that one. And, and at the same time, exactly what you said, Andy. So we, we do, we have so many levels of approval, but I also told them, and this was, and honestly, this is what I love about shirt show and everything. And you learn so much and you guys talking about how you do things at your shop. I've heard Andy say, you know, Hey, we have three places of approval and we, we kind of do too, but we kind of do right. Like nobody signs a piece of paper at the back of the dryer that says I've read this whole shirt and I'm signing here showing this is good and ready to go. So I also told this company, Hey, here's what I'm going to do moving forward on your orders. <laughs> it's going to be approved obviously by you when you send it. My art team is going to approve it and actually sign off on the work order. I go, our print team is going to sign off on the order. And then I'm going to have a manager also then check 
this and sure and sign off on the order because ultimately their their orders are big so like it takes no time at all to do that you know some jobs if it's a if it's 100 pieces here and 100 pieces there you're trying to move in and out quick and that takes a long time but when it's 5000 pieces or 7000 pieces who cares if it takes an extra 20 minutes before you can start printing you know to get those approvals so we did those we ate a little bit of money we worked it all out. And, um, like the next day they sent me the rest of that order and another 8,000 piece order. So, <laughs> see now, like, again, looking at this from the outside, it's kind of like a blessing that that happened because mm -hmm. you showed them yeah, what I'll do, yeah. what you'll do, what you're willing to do for them. So that's mm -hmm. what I mean. Like if everything would have went smooth, it would have went to them. Realistically, yeah. they're looking at it as I paid you for a service. You did the service. Like there's yeah. you're nothing special. You just that's did right. what I asked you to do. But yeah. letting them mess up and then you showing, you know, your true yeah. colors and how you can take care of it and stuff. It's kind of like. And you gave them you. that gem of a quote. That now they're putting on. They Dude, as soon as you show. said that, it was like the end of a Disney movie. It was like, <laughs> I know. well, I was going to say, is like, that needs to be their next t shirt. <laughs> yeah. We win yeah. as a team. We die as a team. As soon as you said that, I, when she was on the phone with you, the hair stood up on the back of her neck. And she was yeah. like, I love you. Yeah. Well, you hope, you know, I mean, that's the, I, I really do think that, um, you know, it's, it's like, I've never had a, I've never had a, customer obviously this big they're, they're they could be a, i mean they could literally change the way my business goes um and um and we, we at the end of the day what we want to do is do a great job for them and be you know like we yeah. try to be that company and i think both of you guys um are the same kind of a company you know what i mean i know for sure andy like in that same dylan's opportunity not, probably not, do something not. like that yeah, yeah dylan will dylan his stuff's on the internet it's like <laughs> hey we there's nobody here when you call to complain. Right. Right. <laughs> <Is that> right? <laughs> yep. No, I mean, we all are, all of us are like that. I mean, that's how yeah. you're, you're successful. I mean, you figure it out along the way that, yeah. you know, and not just um, a giant customer like that, but yeah, that's how oh, we handle everything. Yeah. I mean, it's more, obviously that's a, that's a, that's a bigger deal, but. Well, I've mm -hmm. had people ask me like, how did you land some of these massive clients that I've gotten? And a lot of them, if you actually go back and look at it, a lot of them came from the stupid small orders that a lot of people would just be like, whatever, that's a, that's yeah. a bullshit order. I don't want to deal with it. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I, one of the it. biggest, one of the biggest customers I've ever gotten was the Atlanta Braves. And hmm. they're the reason why I got that order is from like a 10 piece order for a, like, yeah. a, like a yeah. personal softball team. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. You know, they went to like four other print shops and they were like, no, 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 nope. no, no. And they came to me and was like, yeah, I'll do it. And I did it. And then that lady was in charge of like the procurement for like all mm -hmm. the stuff for the Braves. And she yeah. was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to you now. And I was like, that's awesome. Okay, I have a similar yeah. story. Yeah, I had a, a girl <laughs> come in. Her dad brought her in and she ordered 15 or 20 shirts. And he was quiet the whole time. And at the end of it, he said, you know, I'm the principal for uh, St. Louis public schools. And um, I want to order, can you get me a quote for 5,000 polos? And I'm like, nice. okay. And then it turned into like um, polos for the entire district, you know, yeah. like for like seven years, yeah. you know? And so it was just all off of that one. I helped his daughter and we did a good job. Awesome. That's you know, now I know why I can't get St. Louis public schools. So. Right. Because of this guy. <laughs> All you got to do is charm his daughter. <laughs> kidding. Right. What was his name, Andy? <laughs> just kidding. He's like, just kidding. But seriously, I'm going to figure that out. When I'm <laughs> no. I don't think we wouldn't have time to print it right now. <laughs> but that's the truth of it is, is realistically, you you can't just go after the big guys all the time because you're not planting seeds mm -hmm. for future stuff yeah. like you need to do some of these i know that there's a lot of talks in the industry right now of a lot of people being like well i'm going to change my minimums to 50 or 100 or you know whatever mm -hmm. and it's right. kind of like what happens to all those people that just need a little bit now and then eventually yeah. get to do yeah. a lot later so it's a catch sure. point too like i get it you don't want to do a ton of small orders but like yeah sometimes those small orders turn into the biggest ones that change your lives you know what i mean yeah like you yeah end up getting a ton of business from them, so yeah, for sure. No, that's uh, so long story short, what, what ended up happening with the shirts that were messed up? Are they rags now? Uh, no. So yeah, we had to recycle. Um, so I, we, we ran through all kinds of stuff. Like we even, <laughs> we went through all kinds of ideas like, Hey, um, 
what if we make this mistake part of the contest that these shirts were for? Um, and like, you, you know, like the person that wins the contest has to like catch the mistake, you know, some, we tried all kinds of things right. to make these shirts work. And when it wasn't going to, this is, um, pretty much a global company at this point. Cause we were even like, Hey, I have another customer that, um, does t-shirts that take the people in Honduras. And he's always looking for like, if we have messed up shirts, he's like, I can take them. And these people don't have anything and they would love them. And, and they said, we just can't have a misprint out there. So we, we took them to a recycling place that destroys them here local or in St. Louis. Um, and so we literally had an entire enclosed trailer, you know, full of shirts and took them up there. The recycling place charged nothing to take all those shirts and destroy them, by the way, which was pretty cool. So, and I guess was they, there was there a front or a back available on those shirts still? Yeah. I so, say you would have had test prints for the rest of your life. Well, kind of, <laughs> but we had already printed both sides, really. So, it would have been, yeah, we probably could have done something. Yeah, but like Dylan, that, then but, there would be like that reminder every day. Of, oh, there's <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. It, like, for your I mean, shop, for the people in your shop, would be like, hey, <laughs> don't. You know, yeah. remember this? Yeah. Remember, yeah. remember this that? asshole? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Way to go. <laughs> no. uh, we, um, we just, you know, we threw them all in recycling and, um, that was that. that makes sense. You know, move on. Mm -hmm. We have a new segment in our show now and it's a listener question. Okay. Um, and we, we got a bunch, but. Well, we need to discuss <laughs> this still because me and Andy um, today, no and Andy, Andy's putting his foot down. No, uh, no. Well, my, my, pro I want to get your opinion on this, John. All right. We're both right. friends of Andy. Right. You need to, you know, this is an intervention. John, uh, be very, intervention. Careful. <laughs> very careful with your answer here. <laughs> so we've been wanting to do this. We've been wanting to do like listener questions because we get people all the time. Obviously they're, they're, we can't have everybody on the show all the time but, and people yeah. want, have all these questions they want to ask. So we're like, all right, let's put out listener questions. Well, Shirt Show put out a listener question thing this morning, and I put out one too. And we got a ton of people with questions. And I told Andy, I was like, well, we'll just have to pick like the top five for this week, and we'll do like one next week. Right. Later. And he's like, we're going to do one. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we got like, we got like a shitload of questions. Yeah. And it was like, ah, oh, let's pick one. And I'm just well, like, yeah. you I think at least it's, five. It's more important. It's like coveted. Oh, it's the question. Okay. It's the question. Yeah. Yeah. You better I, make your questions good. It better be a damn yeah. good question. Well, that's true. If you, if you pick one that just says like, what's your favorite Pantone? I'm going to be pissed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah. an excellent question that is, an excellent that is a good question, question actually what is your um, favorite pantone dylan uh what what go dylan what's yours <laughs> i don't know uh two nine two nine nine five <laughs> you just made that shit up i didn't make that up it's blue i like it <laughs> all right all right um, so how many, so how many are we going to do? Like, do you want to do just one? Are you asking John? He's well, let's see. Let's see how the first one goes and how long it takes. Yeah, I think it matters on how long they, I'm pretty long winded. So maybe well, one I told, might take I told Andy, <laughs> I told Andy, we need to do like a whole episode, like, yeah, that's or a side do. shoot episode. Like if we did a random one that came out in the middle of the week, that was just Q and a once a month. I like that. My first it. question is when do we get to go take a leak right now? <laughs> Do yeah. it now before we do this. Intermission. That's perfect timing. Yeah. You ready? Can we do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. All right. So we can go with the first question, you know, and yeah. see, see where it goes from there. Here it goes from there. Like, see how long it takes. How long do you have, John? Do you need to be home soon? Dude, I got whatever. I'm like, first of all, I'm going to say this to Dylan. Dylan, I didn't think Andy was ever going to invite me on. So I, I know I had to <laughs> beg and plead. <laughs> he's like, like i don't want this st louis guy on there <laughs> yeah, yeah. i get it he's a dick no. <laughs> no i got all i got all night whatever all right question number one the only question tonight why did it so i didn't have to say number one right so here's the <laughs> question uh today's question comes from a man who we know and love his name's scott at king screen of course he has a question, right? <laughs> um, I'm surprised he didn't send 10 questions in. Um, all right. His question is, what is an improvement you've made in your processes during 2020 that is giving you an advantage in 2021? Um, and the questions are Scott, that's who? a pretty good, it's a pretty good question, bud. Yeah. I got to give him that. Yeah. So is the question just for me or is it uh, for, it's all three for all of us? I think. Yeah, I think we all who? answer it. Who would like to go first? You're the guest. Yeah. I'll, I'll, if I go first, 
like all of them, all of the change. <laughs> like, I think like everyone else, like we, um, 2020 was awesome. We, we, um, we stopped, we stopped doing 70% of the things that we were doing the way we were doing it before and looked for new ways to do it. Right. Like, uh, like talking, like, how do we, how do we process our, how do we do proof approvals? How do we do like everything? Um, part of it was because we moved to a new building. So we had to figure out a few things, but also it was just, um, we, we built a leadership team. And so we, now we have leadership meetings where we bring in those people and we talk about like issues that we're having and, and get those folks opinions. And then we pick the best one and go from there. Um, that was something we've never done before. Um, so, so that the whole, the process, the whole, to answer the question, the process, everything's changed about the process in 2020 because we finally had time to do it, I think. So that would be my answer. Everything. <laughs> yeah. I think for me, um, it's kind of the same as you is that like, we didn't, we didn't really slow down. 2020 was one of the best years we've ever had. Um, but it did give me like that worldwide perspective of like, are we efficient with everything? Like mm -hmm. we, I've always felt pretty good about how we do everything. Um, so I didn't have to do a ton of stuff, but there was some stuff that I'm like, all right, we need to work on um, just certain efficiencies. And I did as many improvements in the shop as possible. Um, and right now me and Andy have been talking about this forever now, it feels like, but like auto reclaims on the way. Nice. Um, just like things I needed to do to get into place and um, getting the new offices done now feels amazing with everybody feeling more at home and not, you know, mm -hmm. bunched up and stuff like that. So I feel like just shop efficiencies was, you know, the best thing that we could have done. And, and I mean, now uh, like most shops were doing a shitload of fulfillment. So mm -hmm. um, implementing that more uh, last year really is paying off in this year for sure. Um, for me, I think it's, two different things. One was just, um, you know, having gone through what, what COVID did to our shop, you know, furloughing half the team and the other half, not knowing, you know, what was next. <laughs> right. um, you know, that gave everybody an entirely different perspective. And so I think that when we, we did, we could finally be here every day and people started to come back, there was a different level of appreciation, you know, for things, um, from me personally, and from people, people that are here, you know, like, uh, you take for granted so much, you know, or I shouldn't say you guys do, but, um, I think that, that I do. And when all of a sudden that's gone, well, um, I noticed that there's a just totally different level of appreciation here in the processes that we had in place, even, um, you know, were changed as we were a smaller team. And then a lot of that we kept, you know, a lot of those processes that we changed because we were smaller, we kept when we scaled back up. Um, so I think that that's, um, that's a big one. And then the next would be what Dylan was talking about. And that is auto reclaim because we installed that and we had already ordered that before we, you know, uh, before we were shut down and it was on its way and it, and it got installed actually. <laughs> and it was a blessing, you know, like I was thinking as a, well, well, God, you know, I just spent all that money on this. Yeah. I don't have that cash anymore, which I want that cash, you know, but, yeah. um, knowing that we were operational and since I am the founder CEO and reclaimer, screen or, reclaimer. <laughs> or, or screen tech, I like that. <laughs> um, since I'm that person now, it's a whole hell of a lot better yeah. um, going over to the Ecotex and sending some screens through. Now, I mean, I, you know, I could do it before. I could still, I can wash screens and a dip with using a dip tank and going into the booth. That's fine, but not as many. And so just to keep up, it's, it would have been pretty yeah. rough. So I would have definitely been slacking on the founder CEO part of my on that. Uh, responsibilities and, and just been pretty much reclaimed. So, I think that the biggest thing we did was having auto reclaim because, and I think that a lot of shops overlook that. That's one of those that, you know, you automate, you do all these other things before 
you ever get an auto reclaim, but mm-hmm. man, it is just so, um, it's, it's a important. game changer. And, and yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, it changes so many things about your shop. I think it should be higher in list. I understand that it's an expensive piece of equipment, but you know, it's, um, it definitely needs to be integrated in your shop um, at some point. So yeah, that's what I, that's what I, those are my two things. Yeah. Hey, is this a dumb question? Because you guys have probably talked about it on like one of the most recent episodes that maybe I haven't gotten to yet, <laughs> but like Dylan, which, uh, or can you talk about which auto reclaim you ended up with? Hmm. Not yet. Not yet. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just glad you didn't go. Well, we talked about it for 45 minutes on the last episode, John, where are you? <laughs> mm. No, we did. We did talk about it, but I mean, it's still, I won't say anything until it's like fully, fully signed. So you, had a handshake. So you guys actually shake hands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe don't Can't shake deal on that. So what do you think? One questions. That's a really great question. And so I think we got time for like one or two more, right? Hey, Are you your show? I, I'm looking at his. I'm looking at his eyes digitally. Who's my eyes you, or John? You and I'm, I know you're like. Don't you do it? Don't you ask me one? All more right. Okay. Oh, how about this? That was the question. That was my question that I answered. No, we all answered it. That's the one I chose. You got one because I don't have. You put. You said you put yours on your Instagram. I never saw any of the questions. So fire away with one of yours, Dylan. Sure. <laughs> what, you got some funny questions like. I got some that are like not print related. But, <laughs> uh, hold on. Well, the, fun, the funny thing is I'll say that I won't, we don't have to answer this one, but at Willis Prince put, what's your biggest regret in life? And I was like, <laughs> I'm not answering that question. No, re- no regrets. No regrets. <laughs> no regrets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's do this one. Let's do little lady LH said, uh, the shirt or print that you are most proud of in your, from your career. Hmm. I first again. Yeah. You're the um, guest. Wow. Okay. I guess this one's a, probably a, an easy one. Um, again, it's a long story. I'm not going to tell the whole story, but during my son's whole thing that he had going on, we started a nonprofit foundation called the Johnny's army foundation. And we printed shirts that um we basically they said johnny's army foundation and we printed shirts and we sold those for like 10 some places 15 bucks but most places 10 bucks a piece and all the money that we would make from those shirts we put into a account that we would then when other kids were diagnosed with cancer they would come to logo daddy and we would like design a shirt for them. Like our guys, like it could be Kayla's hope or whatever it was. And we would give that family a hundred free t-shirts um, with their design on it. And then it would just have a little Johnny's army logo, like on the yoke of the neck or something like that. And so we would give them to them so they could give them away at like their benefit or, or sell them at their benefit a lot of times, or give them to kids in school, whatever, just to show support for their child going through cancer. So my favorite t-shirt easily would have to be the Johnny's army foundation t-shirt. Well, now I wish you didn't go first. Cause now both of ours are going <laughs> to suck. <laughs> 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 and I reg- I regrets my question. Yeah, I regrets. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that softball team I did, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that they one I made millions of dollars on. <laughs> yeah, well, that was my second favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan, you're next. Um, <laughs> there's probably two that I can think of right now. I know I'm going to kick myself in the ass later and forget one, but... Um, one was the big one was shirts we did for, uh, Charles Lippincott, which, who was the head of marketing for the first star Wars movie. Um, he, he came to us and was like, Hey, there's a design that I had some shirts made of just for like a few staff members when we were first starting to promote star Wars in the beginning. And it was never printed again. Uh, it's a really cool print. And I want to get like a ton of them made up for all the cast and crew that were involved in that movie. Cause he, he's pretty old cool. now. Uh, he actually passed away last year. Um, but he had all these shirts made to give to like cast and crew and stuff from the movie and we printed them. So that was pretty awesome. That's cool. Um, and the funny thing was, is he was like really concerned with like, is this doable? Because back then when I got it done, it kind of looked like shit um, <laughs> because it's got like a lot of fades and stuff in it. Yeah. Um, and I was like, no, it's no problem. So we printed it and it came out super awesome. 
Nice. And then uh, the other one was probably I'm big like uh, like stand up comedy fan. So I from for a long time have like been following like Tom Segura's stuff, and then uh, we got the opportunity. I think it was last year to print Tom's shirts for his Netflix special in Austin. Uh, and that was pretty awesome to be able to do those because yeah. you know it's cool. always that thing when you get that job for somebody you actually like in your personal life like care about or yeah. like yeah and to, to do those was pretty rad so it's awesome and then I did these one shirts for this benefit and it made me feel really good <laughs> 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 you single handedly cured cancer with right right obviously with that <laughs> right 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 it's okay <laughs> uh, that's funny well we used to print this Christmas sweatshirt for Hallmark. It was just a thing that that we did for this, I guess, for this region. And um, we made this connection there. And so we were on pretty good terms. And then 9-11 happened. And they uh, called us the next day and said, we have an idea. We want to um, design this shirt and sell them in all of our stores and team up with the Red Cross and donate all the profits. And I said, wow, I mean. No, thanks. Not interested. <laughs> <laughs> We're too busy right now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, not your guy. <laughs> actually, uh, no, we. Um, That's awesome. Uh, we designed something uh, right away and then ordered like all of the red and navy ink there I could find and. Um, just kept printing. We printed, talk about uh, running two shifts. Uh, we were definitely doing that. And I went for like, I don't know, like 10 days, maybe two weeks at least. Oof. Like I would just get there, print all day, go home for, you know, a few minutes to eat, come back to the shop and print all night. And any downtime I had, I was like glued to the TV. I don't know if you remember that time, but, you know, it was just like pretty much mm -hmm. live. We just turned on the TV and it was just... yeah it showed them at ground zero, you know, looking for people and stuff. And so, um, you know, it, it was, uh, I love doing it. I still have some of those shirts. We were in the newspaper and everything. So, um, so yeah. It's funny awesome. you were talking about printing shirts during nine 11. Cause I was still in like early <laughs> high school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I was printing, I was in high school too. I was in high school. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I started, I started this young, you know that. <laughs> Um, no, but that was, I love doing that. It was, uh, you know, whenever you're a part of one of those things, like one of those current events, like we did the, yeah. you remember, you know, the rally squirrel. So I mean, yeah. from St. Louis. And so we were, yeah. uh, there was a huge game and this, we, you know, the Cardinals were losing and the squirrel mm -hmm. came running through and they rallied and won. And so I yeah. can't, we printed so many rally squirrel shirts and it was such yeah. like, a big ass deal that. I mean, whenever you're a part of something that's going on in your community uh, or in, in the 9-11 situation, like the, the yeah. world or our country, I mean, doesn't it feel cool? I mean, we just print T-shirts yet. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just it's just I don't know. You're part of it somehow. So, yeah. I, like I about got my ass sued off for those Raleigh squirrel shirts. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had to, we had it as a parody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Apparently, the Cardinals explained to me that basically they own anything that says rally that has a squirrel on a red t-shirt oh, <laughs> and i was like them. how can that be i was like how yeah, can right? that be <laughs> like, no. so, yeah. so that was just like a fluke thing that happened at a game and now they're saying that they it's their deal well i think we went on to win the world series after that and then there was a that year there was a couple things but that was one of the biggest things that happened so yeah every, so there was a lot of money to be made cool. yeah mm -hmm. Lots. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's good. Those two questions will. Hey, that was a good two with. questions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I do. I do think that we need to do a Q and A episode, though. I feel like, like maybe that's what you guys do: is each person asks one question from a listener. Yeah, we'll just go back like and it. forth. Yeah, we worked it out here. You know. There you go. Good idea, John. That's uh, problem like solved. It. And <laughs> then we do a whole episode, maybe where it's like a you, yeah. Like we could even do it live maybe on our anniversary, our one year, which is coming up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's awesome. Congrats. Hey, thank you. 
Yeah, we only thought it would make it a couple weeks, but here we are. (laughs) Here you go. Now you got it. Now you're going, shit, I got to keep doing this. (laughs) (laughs) So much invested now. Right. (laughs) Yeah. So do you have uh, questions for us? Um, let's see. Yeah, I do have a couple. Um, we already covered auto baggers. That was one big thing. Um, I guess, so Dylan, I mean, what's your, I mean, I know you guys print a lot of water base. Like what's your, would you, if you had to print one thing for the rest of your life, would it be a water base or plastisol? Plastisol. Why plastisol? I, I'm a believer in the fact, I know there's a lot of people out there like water base is the best thing ever. And it, it probably, I mean, it is good. Like there's a lot of good things about it, but there's also a lot of things I don't like about it. Like how hard it is to work with when there's going to be people that tell me it's not hard to work with. If you know what you're doing, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to mitigate the Facebook people right now that are going to be like, you're yeah. an idiot. Um, yeah. But we told you water base was better. Right, right, right. But with plastic salt, <laughs> there's, there's so much you can do with it and it's so Mm -hmm. forgiving and like there's a million additives and there's ways to print it and pressures. And I feel like there's just so many things you can do with it, which there's a lot of things you can do with water-based too, but just like for our experience in the last 12 years, it's kind of like, I, I, I like it. I like how it feels. I like things about it. Like it doesn't have to be bulletproof. It can feel Mm -hmm. soft and be, you Mm -hmm. know, nice and vibrant and everything else. So I feel like if I had to pick one, I would probably say plastic all, but all right. Luckily um, we do both. So that's Dylan's answer that we're recording now. Chad can edit this part out, but the real answer is DTG. We know, we know what your love is. <laughs> that's what he wants. He just wants to uh, print pre-treat all day long. <laughs> <laughs> right, we did right. see a pretty cool pre-treat machine uh, a few weeks back. Yeah. Is that in Chicago? Yep. Is it yeah. called the Forerunner, maybe, or something like that? That's One Toyota year. makes the Forerunner. <laughs> <laughs> Toyota made it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what else it's you got? getting closer to figuring that out. Um, so I have a question for Andy. Uh, <laughs> how much is the gas bill with those two big split belts up there? Because <laughs> I have a feeling I'm going to have a similar one soon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I think when I first installed it compared to two heat waves, mm-hmm. I wanted, so the heat waves run off hundred thousand BTU burners and the sprint is a 300,000. Mm-hmm. And so I figured it would, we already were running two, but you know, yeah. that's different, right? Because we have these two separate dryers, which sometimes mm-hmm. you can turn one on or, or sorry, yeah. turn one on just run one maybe yeah but also there are two separate totally separate things where do you get any benefit like of combining you know the, the dryer? I, just, yeah. I was just curious but anyway our bass our, our bass our bass bill <laughs> <laughs> um our gas bill jumped like 30 percent. it was i was gonna say it must be big because he can't even say it <laughs> <laughs> no, our, our bass bill uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was confusing though because i i don't know you know, it's also like, what, what time of the year is it? Are you running, um, yeah. you know, heat yeah. and stuff like that too. So it's really not yeah. that bad. I mean, when you touch the outside of a sprint or like, it's the same as a heat wave, you touch the, yeah, they're like cold. the actual dryer, it's cold. Like yeah. it's room temperature, right? Yeah. Well, you both, you both have natural gas, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't have natural gas here and I run propane and I okay. have, a, I have a sprint 3000 split belt, just like Andy's. I only have one of them. Um, but our gas bill, and it's the only thing that runs on propane. So the tanks are mm-hmm. specifically for it's, that. Yeah. It's around like 114 bucks a week. That's not like terrible though. When you figure that into really into the cost, I mean, right. so that's actually Andy, the heat wave I bought from you, we ran it propane at the old shop, um, until we got here and then ran it natural gas. Now it's running natural gas, but, um, it doesn't take hardly anything. It's pretty simple. That's why I'm was worried about that. We're trying yeah, to get think, it down to where our utilities are almost nil. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, I wouldn't worry about the sprint. It's not, it yeah. really doesn't cost that much to run. It is, it's well built. There heat escapes from the the only part I notice heat, like maybe the design. I don't know, maybe we could do something with it. Is it is it like the entrance, that entry part? 
Mm -hmm. the exit has that really cool passive uh, yeah. Yeah. Good with that door. It's like one of my favorite parts about the Sprint is that mm -hmm. like with Heatwave or, or a lot of other dryers actually, you know, um, when that shirt exits the dryer, any fumes that are still coming off it just go into your shop. That's why I built those mm -hmm. hoods that I think yeah. came with that heat yeah. wave. I don't know if you, I don't know if you ins like installed it or used it, but we didn't. But we, uh, my same guy that built the Segway thing built us something that's very similar to the new Sprints. Mm -hmm. um, same kind of a thing, so that we can catch that. It yeah, I would really say well. so. Uh, in the summer, we have our all of our doors closed in here, and we use mm -hmm. you know we, we AC we we uh, cool mm -hmm. the whole place. And with, with, uh, like before we put the hoods on those heat waves, you know, it would, it, was hot. it would go, maybe it was hot. And then I would say you would get probably an hour into your day. And mm -hmm. even though we have 15 foot ceilings, all of a sudden you'd see that like that five plume foot of smoke. Of the, right. Just, <laughs> and it just starts yeah. making its way lower and lower. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, anyway, the sprint, the beautiful thing about it is, is you can, it has that a exhaust there that you can adjust you, know, you can say i want it yeah. 100 percent pull out or 80 percent or 50 percent whatever yeah and i noticed that we probably open the doors during the summer maybe once right around lunch mm -hmm. and get some fresh you know like get some yeah. saint peter's air in here i love that part about the sprint it's really efficient what we've tried to do is make the heat wave similar so we did the same thing we built that hood at the end kind of thing almost with the same uh, mm -hmm. way where we can slide it down further or whatever. And we put a, now the, the pipe, the, the outlet pipe is a lot smaller. Ours is like, I think it's a six inch pipe, but we just did a standard six inch metal pipe that goes up through our, um, cause our print shop's in a basement still, you know, there's a floor above it. So we can't do all that smoke, you know, or it would rise up to the second floor. So what we did is we did an inline exhaust vent. And then I put a couple of inline fans throughout that. And, um, something clever on that was we had those inline fans, but we didn't know when you would turn them on or off. So we hooked it to the light on our washout tank. So when the washout tank light is on those inline fans are on and they're drawing all that smell and all that gas or whatever out and just blowing it out of the building. So that's how it stayed. Cause we do the same thing. We air condition in the air condition that. So now it's like the only way to not die in a basement with, a right. gas dryer. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so. I know from going from my uh, Sprint modular I had before, it was just the old Sprint. Um, it was a huge difference going from that to the 3000, the new one. What Especially, was it, I mean, gas bill? The, no, just uh, the gas bill was pretty similar. It didn't, it definitely went down with the, the new one, but it was more uh, heat in the room issue yeah you know i mean yeah uh the big reason why we got because there was nothing wrong with our sprint that we had other than yeah it was it was hot in the room or whatever but uh we really wanted split belt capability mm -hmm. because we were always mm -hmm. fighting two presses running on the same dryer yeah. and you know one's trying to do discharge and one's yeah. trying to do polyester and so on it's and it's just it was just hard scheduling jobs that way and then as soon as we got split belt it was like the best thing we ever did it's beautiful as, as far as scheduling yeah. but but yeah, just like keeping it efficient and heat heat in the dryer and everything, it's a huge difference with the, yeah. the dryers. Yeah, it's awesome. Yep. So what else? All right. More? That's it. I mean, I don't know. Favorite color of emulsion? Blue, pink. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, I like dark color emulsions. We've always gone with blue or purple because it's easier to see the stencil. Gotcha. I know that wasn't a real question you had, but, uh, I don't know. It could be <laughs> Andy. What do you use? Use pink up there. We use blue. I, I, I say that like that because it looks kind of green. Sometimes it depends what, oh, yeah. you're in, I guess, but depends if you're yeah. in the dark room or not. <laughs> yeah. For whatever reason, we switched over to pink at one point. Cause I think the, one of my guys on press said he felt like he could see better mm -hmm. with it or something. Well, we used to and, use, we used to use Yulano orange a long time ago and it was a really bright orange. Like you, mm -hmm. there wasn't much contrast between the stencil and the emulsion. And yeah. when we were trying to line stuff up, it was really hard to see <laughs> yeah. stuff in yeah. the, on the screen and then uh davis actually relabels yulano orange and they dye it purple and it's kind of like a dark purple yeah. so we preferred that even though it's the exact same emulsion we preferred that over the orange because it was so 
There was so much contrast between the stencil. Yeah. So it was really helpful. So ever since then, every emulsion we've tried, we've been kind of steering more towards if they're like, oh, do you want red or blue or whatever? I'm like, I want blue. You know what I mean? I want that dark color. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. So we do uh, quick takes. No, you missed. You skipped right over shop hacks. Oh, shit. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) If you have any, that is. Shop hacks are tough because like as you guys do more episodes, damn you gotta get creative there's a lot out there so i did ask i did i did kind of what um justin did is go around my shop and i asked a few people like hey do you got any hacks or do you got anything and um so my art guys like does it matter can we have an art shop hack no anything anything yeah we had a business one last week and it was good all right so an art shop hack, which again, my guy tell, cause I, I just said, Hey, give me something from artwork down to the screen room. Like that you might do that. Maybe someone else doesn't do. He goes, well, he goes, I'll give you this one, but he goes, maybe everybody's already doing it, but they, um, I don't know if everybody merges all their swatch colors and illustrator to double check their artwork before it goes down. What that means is, um, like say you have a two color design, but there's stuff everywhere. Like there's red, let's say it's red and white and there's red, like lots of detail red. What he does is when he selects everything that's red, like sometimes you might send something and you didn't select one piece or something like that. So it could go down and there could be a mistake. He just takes a, a another color, like maybe a lime green or something. And he merges the swatch with red and it just turns everything green. And then you can see if you've missed anything or not exactly. before it goes down yeah so maybe everybody does that he even said that he goes probably everybody already does this but this is all i got so i mean it's the thing is is it's it's super handy because the um we use photoshop way more than we use for like illustrator so okay um i'm not super familiar with a ton of stuff on there but there's a lot of people that listen to the show that you might say something that me and andy are like yeah we we've done that before but there might be like 40 people that are like oh shit that makes total sense yeah. Um, so yeah. Th- I feel like there's no bad shop hacks. I mean, it's, yeah, it's like we a- do. Um, I had a visitor this week. Um, Ryan Moore came out and did came and saw the shop. And, um, the one, it was funny. He walks through my whole shop and the only thing he was really taking photos of is on our carts full of shirts. We have all the jobs staged and everything on black carts but we made we made them out of magnet material that goes on like the side of a truck because we print a lot of vinyl here so we made these we have one they're about i don't know they're like probably maybe 10 inches by 10 inch squares and one says stop more coming (laughs) meaning more pieces coming and then one says you know is green and says orders complete ready to print right so we put the job ticket we have these cards stacked out and we sort of have a queue, you know, like the guys can come in and we pretty much have everything set up for them to go out in rows, but sometimes something moves to the front or they don't have screens for this. So they go to the next one, but we just put a green and red tag on everything. Like if there's a green tag, it's all been counted. It's all there. It's all good. You're good to go. Um, if you've got screens, if it's red, obviously there's more coming. So that was, but it's yeah, just Ryan, a real obvious uh, sign. Ryan stopped by here too. Did you yeah. have a chance? Did you take an ice bath with him also? I didn't take an ice bath with him, <laughs> but I have taken ice him. baths. <laughs> yeah, we take it together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like that offsets the cold because it's nice and hot and steamy in there with two. Of you. <laughs> yeah, right. Did you guys melt all the ice? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, oh, I like that shop pack. It was good. Um, I, just like Dylan said, if you, just because maybe half the people you know, already knew that maybe the other half don't, I mean, all that goes. Well, that makes perfect. That one's, that one's good, but we just don't do, we do it differently in our shop. Like we're not stacking stuff up when it's counted in, we're folding it back up, putting it back in the box and on the shelf. Okay. So when my guys pull a job, they're pulling the boxes off the shelf. So okay. they wouldn't be able to pull it off the shelf if it wasn't fully counted in yet. Cause it's like a, a part of the, racks that are like stuff that we're waiting on pieces for and then there's like gotcha. the done and ready ones um the reason why we do uh, we do that is because we're putting everything from like a gilding box or whatever it comes in as to into yours folded sorted into ours and then on the box is like the dimensions the weight everything it needs for shipping that mm-hmm. way as soon as it's printed the end of the dryer tapes it puts it out for shipping and it's done and over go. with 
or Chris already puts the labels on it earlier that week or that day or whatever. So it's just going to go right out the door. So nice. Um, Carts is, I've always seen people do that, like pre-stage a ton of carts. And I'm like kind of jealous of the fact that they can just pull a cart and bring it over. But I don't think I would have the the room or the space to do that. It does take up a lot of space. I mean, you can, we started out with, I don't know, you know, a handful of carts and then it went to like 12 carts. And now I think we right. have like 40 carts or something. That's what I mean. Like there's some shops, there's some shops carts. that are like, yeah. I have like, you know, like 45 carts. And it's like, that's yeah. a lot. Of, that's a lot. Ron, it's a lot of carts. Ron, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, um, so I do have a shop hack. It's actually your shop hack um, that I would love for you to share. You have on your Instagram, you have these magical white tables. They're like, uh, they have black, oh. like um, <laughs> yeah. um, legs, I yeah. guess, in a frame, yeah. like a black frame. And then you they didn't want to like, tell people this secret. <laughs> we can edit this out, but dude, dude, no. those are awesome. Where did you get the tables? Those? Are awesome. They rock. So when we when we got this building we're like we wanted these big nice tables right like i wanted to make a big u around the back of my dryer where we can stack them we wanted everything to roll on big casters to where we could just we stack out a whole table and we just roll it over to finishing and then they finish it we don't have to move shirts anymore you know and um so my father-in-law um and that's what i was gonna say like dude like I, i guess maybe everybody shops this i know um dylan said like a lot of him and his buddies and this and that but like dude my fan without my like my wife's family all kind of work here and do different things you know not full-time but like part-time like um my father-in-law is kind of he's our maintenance man right so he comes in every friday and we literally just slack him like hey um sinks leaking hey uh this you know so he comes in he does all the maintenance on the presses every week on friday but then he'll also do like you know the other day he wired up another flash and like he's a welder. So he made, he goes, just buy a bunch of steel. We're going to, you know, we build stuff. So we made all the, we got all the steel that we ordered. Like, I think it was like 700 bucks for all the steel. And I made, I have 11 tables that are like four foot by, I think they're 10 or 12 feet all on big casters. They're super, like you could sit on them. They're heavy duty that way. And then we get a substrate called max metal. And you get that from a sign shop. Um, we use it all the time, like on exterior signs. That's what we mount vinyl to, to do an exterior sign. But they make six millimeter max metal, which is almost like half inch. And we put that down on the tape on the top. That's the tabletop because it's already white. It's aluminum. It's like painted aluminum. So you can just spray alcohol on it and clean it or wipe it really easy. And we just it's cut durable, max metal. So I guess. It's super durable. Yeah. And shirts will like, you can take a stack of like 200 shirts and just slide them across it. You know what I mean? Like, so it's kind of nice. Um, and it's really smooth. So we, we basically made all these tables. And the nice thing is when you make them yourself, you know, they're obviously all the exact same height. So they're, you know, they just, they roll easy They're It's so nice. I mean, those tables, we joke because we need like three or four more tables. Um, can you make me one? We just uh, (laughs) built them. I know, right. (laughs) They're awesome. He probably will. Honestly, he probably will. We'll just, we'll, what we'll do is we'll, we'll figure out how many tables we need Andy and we'll, We'll just go buy steel from Figure Shapiro for you. and we'll, we'll get it done. I we can't can do like, I, I don't want to like brag about it, but it's one of those things. That's like the greatest thing that ever could have happened to me is like my dad being our handyman and like the guy mm-hmm. who does, like you said, mm-hmm. like the maintenance and everything, like literally my dad, uh, had to like retire because he had bad knees and got them fixed or whatever. But like, he's pretty much been here on payroll for like, mm-hmm. like three years, like every day of the week he's here basically <laughs> like, yeah, you know, building the offices or, you know, right now he's working next door or next week he's tearing down our bathroom for like the auto reclaim. And it's just like, I always yeah. have a list of like a running list of things that I want to do. I'm like, oh, I need new outlets over here. I need this or whatever. And it's just like, yeah, dad's here. You know what I mean? Like I yeah. pay him, like just I would give it to him. Yeah, yeah. And the funny yeah. thing is he's always done work for other people and like he charges them whatever. But I always pay, I pay him like five bucks more than he would like charge like per hour what he pays mm-hmm. like charges for anybody else. Cause yeah. it's just cool to like have your dad around every day to be like. Yeah, it's awesome. I, um, yeah, mine is my wife spent, you know, like <laughs> I just, <laughs> I joke with my wife all the time. I said, if she ever like divorces me, I'm going to stay married to her family because <laughs> like I need them so much, you know? Right, right. And, uh, 
but uh, I would hope that she would never divorce me. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> Everything's <you> great. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, man, her family, like um, her mom owns a cleaning business. So she comes in and does our cleaning like two or three times a week. And then uh, her dad does so much for me here. Her brother uh, is, he's been with me now two and a half years. And um, he's like, he's my screen room guy now. So like, I joke around like I, I'm never going to get away with anything. Like I'm, I only have nice things to say about my wife <laughs> because <laughs> her family's always there. <laughs> and so, nice. Yeah. All right. Quick takes. Oh, see, there you go again. What? There you go again. Skip. Uh oh. Is he skipping you know what? Ahead? You know what? Andy, this he's bored why, with me. He's bored with me trying to get it over with. <laughs> Whatever. This is why, you know, you and I work is because. Uh, whenever I say something stupid, you're there to make fun of me. And whenever you skip over stuff, I'm there to remind you, we've got a best YouTube comment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah. Well, this right? is the first time. All right. This is the first time we've done it. So. Well, here, how about, how about we do it like this? I will say you're the joke responsible and, you, and you do the, you do the punchline. Punch like I'll, yeah, I'll ask the question and you do the punchline. So this comes from Hanson. Hold the on, band hands. This question. Okay. Uh, oh, well, actually, told- so a couple of times ago, or a couple of episodes ago, we said comment on YouTube, and we'll read the best comment. And so we have a comment that we chose is the best, and it's an actually actually it's a joke, and it's from Hanson Screen Printing. And here we go, Dylan. I think he's looking up. The I am because I told you what it was earlier, and now you're making me do it. No, I remembered the punchline, but I couldn't remember the Oh, you botched, you botched it earlier. I was pretty close. Hold on. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Okay. Again, best YouTube comment from Hanson Screen Printing. <laughs> yeah, and if you hear this, if you hear this, Hanson Mbop, uh, email, <laughs> DM me, and I will send you out a shirt and a pen. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that part. Yep. Um, did you hear about the restaurant on the moon? Great food, no atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> I want so many more dad jokes sent to us. <laughs> so please, please keep that going. Um, all right, now we can do quick takes. Okay, all right. <laughs> and I texted you those earlier. See, this yeah, is why I this works. Yeah. I got you this stuff. And so you go with the first question. Okay, okay, okay. <sighs> What's your go-to beverage? Uh, honestly, probably water. <laughs> I drink a lot of water. That's not bad. Nowadays. <laughs> um, most of the time, it's water. Are you one um, of those it, guys that like tries to drink a certain amount every day? Or are you just like... No, I'm, no, I don't try to drink a certain amount every day. I just end up drinking a lot every day of water. We uh, Now, sometimes I'll do like um, like some like uh, flavor stuff in it or something like that. But most of the time, it's just uh, water. Right. If you're but feeling kind of... Hold on. Are you going to do another question? No, I didn't ask him. This is a serious question. Like, are you a room temperature water guy or a cold water guy? Um, I can go either, but I have a tooth that's been giving me problems. So now I'm more of a room temperature guy. (laughs) I cannot do room temperature. I like ice water though a lot. Like, especially if I'm working out or something, I want something super cold. Yeah. I feel like every beverage I enjoy has to be cold. It's freezing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with I'm with you there. I have two questions off of this first question. One, have you ever tried liquid death? Isn't it called that liquid, liquid death? death? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's no. so taken back by that. He's like, we've never what? heard of it. It's actually so it's water. A lot of like bottled water or water that you get from even if it's not in a plastic bottle, but yeah, um, if it's in a can or whatever, it's from it's just water from like your metropolitan water Place. district but that's been yeah. filtered and then bottled yeah not liquid death hmm. liquid death comes from 1000 meters below oh. i don't know that i don't know where it comes from no it, it actually does come from like a spring somewhere in yeah. australia or it's, it's, the, a, it's the, a company the, that does water in a can to save like okay um, plastic. well but, nice. it, but it does do that because you can recycle aluminum way better than you can recycle plastic but yeah it also takes it it also gets its water from a source like a better source than yeah does it taste ever i don't different? know it's water 
I've had it. It's it just has a really water, clever marketing. It's called, yeah. it's called Yeah. I love down. I love um, the company because of the marketing. Like the marketing yeah. alone is is one of those it's things. Good. It's just huge marketing. I don't know. My water at home comes from a spring a thousand meters below the earth, too. I yeah, think yeah, yeah, yeah. because our wells like that deep. Right. It's like <laughs> so. it's like my dad's house. Like I have town water and like I'm yeah. used to it now and I can't taste the difference. But when I, yeah. I go to my dad's house, I feel like it's like poured from a glacier because it's like <laughs> yeah. perfect like well water like yeah. it's, it's like no anything in it yep um it's awesome but yeah uh liquid death has like really liquid death i'll try it yeah, yeah. i didn't oh, know yeah. if you meant alcoholic so, drink or regular drink at first so <laughs> any well, you can, your go-to beverage it could yeah. have been water yeah yeah all right i have water. a i have a listener quick take you ready for this one it is from What's blackout going? screen printing and it's actually two quick takes the first one is tacos or pizza? Pizza. And the second is pirates or ninjas? Ooh, I would say pirates. Definitely pirates. Pirates are way more fun than ninjas. Yeah, pirates drink and just party, yeah, they're party. all the time. Exactly. <laughs> ninjas are like ninjas are like super focused, like yeah. get the You're shit kicked out of them all the time. Everyone. Yeah. <laughs> pirates are like like party. I mean, yeah. Who would win yeah, in a nice, in a fight? But, Ninja. Um, well, if the pirates are already <laughs> drunk, maybe the pirates, but pro- no, probably the ninjas every time in a fight. But yeah, unless you yeah, got a sweet like peg leg or something. The pirates. Or the only bad patch. thing that's going to happen at the end of the night, one of the pirates are going to die. That's just how it always turns out. They're just but getting scurvy. That, yeah. <laughs> right. Best recent read. Um, I don't know. I don't read much. Um. I guess recent audio book. I, so that's, that's, that's why I'm not in the book club too, by the way, is because I don't read much. I try. You don't have to. I, I try. I know. I, I, do, I started listening to the first like audio book and I'm like, I, you know, I know I don't have time for this. I'm not going to be able to finish it. So Neither I think I. the last thing I read. Dylan doesn't like, have that time I, either. Yeah. And he doesn't. I don't finish, finish them. <laughs> he doesn't. No. Isn't that pretty pitiful? Isn't that pitiful that the founder, book club? The, one of the, 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 one of the co-founders of the book club doesn't finish the book. I'm here to He's support busy you. being a screen tech. Yeah, I'm here being a screen tech extraordinaire. <laughs> You're over here fucking reading I books. I don't have I don't have like any nerd. Yeah, I just I just sit around reading <laughs> books. Um, so what is your I, what's the best one though? It doesn't have to be a read, it can be an audio book too. Yeah. So um I listened to the E Myth um was the last thing that I read. It's called the E Myth. It's basically an entrepreneurial book. Um talks about business and how to set up your business for success more than uh I listen to that kind of stuff. Like, like when I do take the time to listen to a book, I try to do it about something that's like drive, like a pain point at that, at that point in my life. I want to learn something about yeah, information. I I do the same thing. Like sometimes I'm in the mood to listen to music when I'm in the car. Other times Mm -hmm. I want to listen to uh, one of my favorite comedians podcast. And then Mm -hmm. other times I'm like, I need some inspiration, you know, or something. And so try and find something. I do listen to a lot of motivational stuff, like, but it's quick stuff. Like on the way to work, I'll like listen to like, uh, I don't know. I love Eric Thomas, that kind of stuff. You know, like I'll listen to that kind of stuff because it gets me all fired up. And then I come in and feel like I'm going to like change somebody's life. And I usually never do, but it, <laughs> maybe it changes mine. <laughs> I can't, I'm not going to lie. I can't do the motivational stuff. Really? I just can't at all. Because I know that most of those, most of the time, those dudes just, make their living off of being a motivational um, speaker making the money yeah and it's just to me it's like what did you do like yeah <laughs> you're just a yeah. dude being like live your life and i'm like i just don't <laughs> fucking well, right you're now. listening to the wrong motivational stuff <laughs> yeah there's good guys there's yeah good there's guys good guys out. like i was listening to um george mumford uh okay. he was being that interviewed by up. he was being that interviewed by, <laughs> he was on uh tim ferris <laughs> podcast and his he used to be the um, mindfulness and meditation coach for Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. And dude, yeah. like he knows his shit. And when you were saying earlier, like you listen to something like this quick thing, I wish that a lot of those were condensed down into these little yeah. things, you know, like a 10 minute or whatever. Yes, yeah, so you could write. But what, yeah. 
what tends to happen is that I, I start a podcast and if it's an hour long, it takes me, you know, five drives to, to finish. Kind of like the shirt show, how they're fucking. Kind of like a shirt show. Long. Yeah, it's me. Yeah. I listen it to it over three mornings. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's right. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. It's all right. No, I think, I think there is good stuff. Like if you go searching for, I want to listen to a motivational speaker, it probably, yeah. it probably uh, find something horrible like like you talked yeah. about like a guy i just want i just want chris farley in a van down by the river that's the only motivational speaker <laughs> there's good stuff out there man and so i will yeah. the next time john or myself we come across a good one we'll send yeah. it to you we'll send, we'll send it. it to you big yeah. dog and you give it a shot oh. okay can we yeah. to ignore it yeah you have to listen to it all the way through <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna ask uh, it better motivate so that... it better motivate the shit out of me if it doesn't <laughs> if nothing advice? else just play it over a loudspeaker in your right. in your production room <laughs> they'll love it i'm sure they'll love it <laughs> that, that's a, that it would be a thing like you make your like it's just that's part of your shop's routine <laughs> You yeah. know, like when you get and I would just see everybody out there put their headphones in and it would just <laughs> yeah. play over everybody I listening have, to something else. I have motivational quotes all over the shop, you know, shit that I like, like this and stuff like that. And I'm sure some of my guys are like going, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> Live, laugh, love above the toilet. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's a great idea. I should do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. What do you got, Andy? What, what advice would you give your 20 year old self? Oh, <laughs> oh man. Um, wow. When I was 20, I was still playing in bands and doing, you know, just working and, and just out, you know, hanging with bands and goofing off and stuff. And, and now that, you know, you get a little older and you think about, you know, some of these guys I listen to are talking about like, you know, basically what you're doing today, you're going to reap the benefit of that five years from now, not today, you know? And so I kind of screwed off so much from like 20 to 25 that it really took me until I was almost 30 to like dive into business and really kind of get my shit together. And, um, had I started doing that when I was 20, you know, I know 20 year old guys now that work for me that I'm like going, dude, if you'll just listen and pay attention, like you could be killing it by the time you're 25 or 30 years old, <laughs> you know, but back then I just didn't really give a shit. And so I would, well, I would the say hard, the hard part is, is that nobody like you, you remember your parents saying that like, Oh, one mm -hmm. day you'll, you'll know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And all this other stuff. Like, it's totally true that like, yeah. It's a generational thing where you're like, yep. oh, I don't, they, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And then yeah. you get to be old and then you tell your kids like, same thing. If yeah. you would just listen to exactly what I'm saying right now, it's going to save you so much pain yeah. and heartache and like issues. And, and they're just they like, you off. yeah, like, fuck they, this. <laughs> like I'm going to figure, I'll figure my own shit out. You don't know yeah. what you're talking about. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> it just right. sucks that say, they don't um, absorb that. I would say that um, I'm with you on that because I mean, I screwed off from 20 to 25. I would say that though, um, you know, our brains aren't even fully developed until we're 25. And for me, it's more like 55 probably. <laughs> but I mean, uh, also I would say that if if I didn't do that, like if I didn't screw around, you know, in my early 20s, then I, I sometimes think like, oh, would I, would I have gotten to, to 35 or 40 and said, oh, I should have, <clears> you know, like I yeah. should have, you know, got yeah. into trouble more or something like that, you know, or, yeah. or, or whatever. Why did I have to be so serious at, at 20? And why didn't yeah. I do it's the grass is greener thing, dumb shit yeah. stuff. But I feel you on that too, because I sometimes think like, why did I, yeah. you know, blow off some of those years, you know, I could have been, I could have been where I'm at right now, five years ago or 10 years ago. <laughs> right. So. My thing is, I feel like I partied a lot and did a lot of dumb shit in my teens that, by the time I was, you know, 18 or whatever, I was kind of like over a lot of that stuff, like a lot, mm -hmm. doing a lot of really dumb stuff. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I got, you know, started doing business and stuff when I was like just about 18. And then, uh, I don't know, I, I took the approach of like have kids early. So that way, mm -hmm. like when, my, when I'm 40, my son will be 18. Yeah. So like, I'm like, all right, do I do try to do the travel and a bunch of bullshit stuff that I want to do when I'm young and I have no money and no opportunities yeah. or, or do later. I do it the other way? So that way when I'm yeah. 40, I have yeah. an established business and money to be like, well, what do you want to do now? And then I can mm -hmm. like go do stuff because I have yeah. shit figured out. Did you think that through? 
Like that's what you yeah. thought when you were that yeah. young, like you thought that through. Yeah. I didn't, wow. I didn't think that through, but I, but I did that <laughs> on accident and I'm telling you, it's great because like, uh, I'm in my forties and my, and my wife as well. And we like, we're basically like part-time empty nesters now. And it's awesome because like the business can kind of run itself. Some we have right. enough money that we can go do like, so her and I are like living our best life out here. We're like traveling to even through COVID we're like, you know, we're vaccinated and everything's good. So we're like, Hey, let's go to Vegas. Let's go to Nashville. Let's go to that's exactly, KC. Let's that's exactly what I'm thinking. It's just like, yeah. I'll be established enough to be like, what do you want to do this weekend or this yeah. week? Or do you want to go away yeah. for a month or whatever you want to do? Like I'll have yeah, the true structure. Yeah. And then I usually call Andy and Joanne and I'm like, Hey, do you guys want to do this or that? He's like, no. Cleaning screens. Cleaning screens. <laughs> <laughs> he actually did ask me. He's like, hey, you want to go side by siding? Uh, and he's like, you can yeah. trust me. You can trust me. I, I won't kill us. I think Andy's scared. Like, Andy's scared. Like, he might have seen side by side videos where these guys are crazy. Like, they're jumping off of rocks and stuff. And and I'm like, maybe he won't go because he thinks, like, I'm going to, like, try to kill him so that I don't have any competition in St. Louis. <laughs> right. But <laughs> definitely running through his brain. <laughs> like, yeah, I have screens to do. Sorry. I got screens. I'm out. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I got the next one. It's your turn, Dylan. Yeah. What's the most St. Louis thing you do? Uh, I say Ope a lot. <laughs> I think that's a St. Louis thing. What was yeah. that? Um, what was that cake you sent me? Or it was like gooey butter, butter. gooey yeah. butter, gooey, gooey, gooey yeah. butter. Um, so I, well, I do if Andy sends one, uh, but I, <laughs> I, I don't eat a lot of gooey butter cake. I don't know. I think here, okay. The most St. Louis thing I do is, we go to Emo's all the time. We love Emo's. And so, uh, which is our local pizza place, right? So we get, you know, Emo's pizza and wings. And now my wife and I have started making, we just go buy like Emo's sauce, Emo's cheese, and you can even get Emo's crust. I think now we just make them at home, but we eat, we eat that style of pizza like all the time. So that's probably the most St. Louis thing I do. I, I would. Yeah. St. Yeah. Louis's pizza is a thin crust. Yeah. Um, like cracker pizza. Now. Yeah, what, I almost uh, wrote, uh in, instead of what's the most St. Louis thing, I almost wrote Jeffco. <laughs> uh the most Jeffco, man. That's even better. <laughs> so the most Jeffco thing for Dylan, Jeffco is like out here when you cross the Merrimack and come into Jefferson County, it's kind of another world a little bit, wouldn't you say, Andy? Like it's um uh, yeah. You can see some crazy like, shit. Out like here. The, is, it just some, is it just the redneck part of it's town? Straight, yeah. Some parts of some parts of town, and honestly, not too far from where I live, is just some straight redneckery, like all the time. You can do some serious wild boy stuff out there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. If there, that's what I mean. Like I, you know, if Justin only knew, like where <laughs> where I'm at out here, like he could just come here. We could do some crazy wild boy shit. Um, but um, yeah, like I mean, the other day I. I passed a car. I was actually following behind a car for a while and then passed him. Uh, this car had, I mean, he had to at least have a pallet of two by fours on top, on the roof of a car strapped down, you know, like some crazy shit like that. That's Jefferson <laughs> County. Just stuff. some good but, old boys. Yeah, pretty much that. <laughs> but um, I think maybe, I don't know. Um, I don't know. We have a big, crazy 4th of July party at our house and we shoot off fireworks that like, you know, like I, it's, I'm surprised that more people don't get hurt. Like they're, they're basically, <laughs> they're basically bombs. Yeah. We shoot bombs off. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We, we basically shoot <laughs> off bombs and, um, and it's not, it's weird the way where everybody sits at, like by our pool, we have like a step down and we shoot them off from there. And it's like, you know, when, sh when things go crazy, it gets a little crazy. Like it, <laughs> fireworks are just raining down on people, like the hot, you know, after they blow that's just up, part, just that's just down. part of 4th of July though, America. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's maybe just a little more intense the way we do it. Cause we're just down there. We light them with a propane bottle. I don't know if everybody does that. Oh, shit. <laughs> that sounds, sounds good. <laughs> so, you know, our fireworks, they don't light with just regular matches. No a lighter. You need, propane. we use a, like you click it and it goes like a torch. <laughs> Right, right, right. where you easier. accidentally burn in the side of the firework <laughs> yeah. instead of yeah, you hit the, the side of a 
of a <laughs> fountain of rockets. <laughs> right. <laughs> that goes awry. Perfect. Yeah. So that kind of uh, stuff. What would you be doing if you weren't printing shirts? Um, hopefully, well, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I probably, if I was, if we're being, if like my dream, I would be playing drums. If it wasn't my dream, I would be running probably heavy equipment, which is what I used to do. I was in construction, ran a lot of heavy equipment. So, um, I enjoyed that. I didn't mind that. I just, um, I don't know. I had done it long enough, wanted something different, but, um, other than that, I think my wife and I, we want to retire and maybe move to Florida and I'm going to get like a little three piece beach band. And I'm just going to go make like five or 600 bucks a week and hang in bars and clubs. <laughs> yeah. Just like, yeah, wherever that's, that's awesome. the goal. That sounds good. <laughs> you can go hang out on the beach with Andy when he has his, uh, yeah. manual on the beach and sells beach. Yes. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> I like it. That but works. just remember that's just a front for selling other stuff. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's that's Ozark shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh what was it? Where can people find you? Um, so you can go to logodaddygraphics.com. That's our website. Um I think it's um uh, just logo daddy on Instagram. I don't know. It might be something else. If you type in logo daddy, I think we come up. <laughs> I should probably do a better job with that. I actually um, sent you, uh, it's lo logo daddy graphics. I sent you that Mr. Mobility video. Oh, nice. We, we, nice. While we Thank were you. talking. So I, I double checked yeah. it for you. You're good. Nice. Thanks. Good. Cause I had it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can go there and find us. Um, my, um, personal Instagram is the real John Gibbs. I post a lot from that. Um, you know, I got a bunch of, I met a bunch of people doing like a little fitness challenge thing in December, a bunch of other printers and became good friends with them. And so we all kind of keep up and talk and whatever. And, uh, so, you know, I post a lot of shit on there too, but yeah, I saw, I saw it. that you, uh, you got into a challenge with Ryan and some other people. <laughs> yeah, which is a bad idea, by the way. <laughs> don't get into a challenge with Ryan. I don't think I would want to after some of the stories we've talked about with him. He's crazy. Um, super good guy. Love like love just hearing his thought process, but um but if when it comes to fitness, like he's that guy that no matter what you think is crazy, like like the hardest thing you can think of. He's like, you go like, Hey, we're going to, we're going to do a Murph and then we're going to run like 10 miles. He's like, Oh, I did a Murph and then just ran the whole marathon. Like, and then I had the breakfast same day. Yeah. And then, <laughs> then I went to lunch and then later did an ice bath and then went to, and I'm like, and he, and he's doing it. I mean, it's crazy. You know, this guy is like, so that was cool. We ran a 5k when he was here the other day. And I was like, the whole, I, like I had anxiety leading up to it. Cause I'm going, I mean, he's gonna, like, I'm going to be too slow. He's not going to smoke that. you. So he's just going to smoke me or he's going to laugh or it's going to be. <laughs> so then I was like, the whole you time know. you're running full speed and he's like going yeah. backwards having a conversation. He was, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. He was reading a book. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. <No. laughs> All right. Andy. Yeah. Finish All her right, off. Man, what's what's for dinner? Oh, man. I don't know. Maybe Emo's pizzas. <laughs> no, I don't know. Tonight we, um, we missed our, we missed going to Ola, our favorite little Mexican restaurant. And so, um, I don't know. My wife and I may go there. We're, um, we're kiddo free tonight. So we may go to Ola and have a margarita and a couple of tacos or something. So that sounds amazing right now. Yeah. Doesn't it? You should come. I'll, I'll be out. What I'll are you doing for dinner? <laughs> Let's do it. It's only like a 16 hour drive. I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> Just fly in. Get I'll on be the there jet. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, John. Well, it was good to have you on. I'm glad we got to talk shit about Andy a little bit. Um, a little bit. That, that always warms my heart. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm still jealous of you too. Like one of these days I'm going to, maybe one of these days you guys will go somewhere and invite me and I'll get to hang out. Or we should all go, we should all go side by side riding. And then, oh, yeah. um, camping and just hanging that'd be fun well i'm i'm always down to come out and hang it out at andy's and yeah so next time i sure. come out i'll make sure we hit you up and do some dangerous stuff yeah we at least got to do a pool day and 
Margs and all that good stuff. So it'll right. be fun. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, for sure. John, good talking to you as always. Yep. Talk soon. Have a good night, right. man. See, See you guys. Thank you. Later.